All right, so it is finally time for me to start making the new list for this year. Uh, slight error going on, and I can't save Dobrynia to this, so I'll just try to add her to this thing at a later time. But going over to your list, uh, I know this is going to be a long one because the last few have just been me updating it. This is me actually like doing it this year. Uh, so brief run through over requirements for this tier list and how I look at them. MP1, Pragacha, that's all we really care about for this list. Um, I might mention higher copies, but how I place them, it's meant to be placed at MP1. Um, and this is for like uh, just easy scaling and easy comparisons. Because even comparing like MP2 or higher four stars to five stars for some of them, for some five stars, it's not fair. Um, yeah, there, there's just a whole lot more factors that go into it now because of um, the new append system, like the updates to the append system. Uh, like for MP1 characters, it's not completely outside of the realm of possibility now. Um, where did I put it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So for like even permanent characters, they're able to get an append at uh, Bond 9. So now like before it was like they needed uh, like Bond 11. Now it's 9. Um, I, at this point, I am going to consider just like a pen to, yeah. So, uh, and skill. All right. So I'm just going to add it here because there are people that have like Sum and I like very well railed, uh, and bonded. Uh, they might like you might be at MP1. I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm just saying it's a possibility for people. It's not it's not completely outside the realm of possibility, and it's just like one more bond level than what I had previously. Um these are at level 100. This is just so damage scaling is consistent across the board. Uh when I do decide to bring out uh Laplace and do calculations for the video. Uh, it shouldn't be this whole, the whole process of getting those calcs. I might just cut those out and just show the results. So EX, what they do extremely well or very few. If two characters occupy the same exact spot um, but are pretty much interchangeable, I'll, I probably won't put them in EX and just move them down to A+. Um, which also should add that right now. Yeah, no characters that would fall X. However, the space is crap. All right. Yeah. So this goes for characters like um. Uh, I want to give the example of like Charlemagne versus Saber Ogiton. Uh, both do pretty similar things. It's just like one is better for sustained fights because they have five turn duration. The other is burst, uh, three turn. Uh, so yeah, it's like you don't need Charlemagne half the time because the fight doesn't last that long. But if the fight goes longer, you'd bring him. And then Okitan, like all her buffs run out after three turns. So she's up for three, down for three for the most part. Uh, yeah, so... Max mana loading and max skill, I feel, is just like the easiest way to just move forward for this. For the like, so characters can get if they can farm better, they can like they should be using their best shit. Uh, and I'm just gonna delete this stuff here because I don't even care about. I'm not ever gonna be doing a looping tier list because that shit is so conditional. All right. <laughs> So let us get started. Uh, I'm not going to put chats on screen, but if people want to chime in because I'm being wrong, you guys are welcome to. I'm, I welcome the conversation for this video. 
But just now, this is going to be a long one. Um, so, yeah. All right. We're also just going to go in order. So, Elizabeth Bathory. Start with Ellie. Uh, she has always been known for her esports potential because first and second skill were like really easy to go off of. Um, and that her third skill kind of exists there. So, like, most people that use her, they don't use her like in actual farming. They don't use her for damage. They use her to drop two very high value buffs 40% attack and 20% defense with a buff strip. But it's only the latest buff strip. So, this is a little more conditional than it could be. Um, and since this is the longer tier list, I'll go through, like, briefly go through, like, some stuff that I want to point out, like, with, uh, upstairs, hit counts, and all that stuff. Kind of like a normal review, but a lot faster, because I'm not trying to cram 42 videos into one. That's not what this list is about. It is, like, pretty much spark notes, uh... Or for characters I don't plan on making another video on anytime soon, I, it kind of can just be pulled from here. All right, so Ellie, base attack. It's okay for a four-star. HP, a little low for a four-star, but I wouldn't worry too much. MP charge, 1.1, uh, but very not card-based gains at all. She's a buster unit. Uh, these are okay, but you're not ever really going to be clicking these. Uh, like I said, this got buff. And they made it so she is a female buffer for esports. You mostly keep her at level 50 or 40 out of 50. Um, and you use these two skills in combination. And then she's just expected to die and that's it. So this guts, not good. This is If they ever give her another buff, this is what they're going to buff. 100%. They're not going to double buff her MP. Uh, passives, it's magic resistant arts, uh, territory creation. So she only has the one arts card, but eh, makes it better. Uh, she is not a farmer, so this stuff kind of doesn't matter unless you really want her to MP, in which case these two are pretty much like recommended. MP ignores defense, so useful utility if you need that. Uh, buff, uh, she reduces buff uh, receive success rate, so she makes it so the enemies uh, have a chance of not actually giving buffs to themselves. At one stack, it's not going to do too much, but if you actually manage to keep Ellie MPing like constantly, uh, it does mean that there are effects like I believe even break bar effect. If it's on Ellie, I I feel like this would make it so there's a chance that those break bars just don't do what they're supposed to do. So, kind of cool, but again, not, not something you'd be building your team around because this is like pure Gamba RNG. Um, and then this Bonsi is terrible. What the fuck? Year one design, by the way. And again, I am not looking at what I had like last year for placements. This is all starting fresh. Uh, niche, just because like you're not using her for the intended purpose. Uh, and that thing with the MP is kind of funny. Just to watch the enemies just not land anything and waste turns like that. But that's not something I'd bank for, bank on. And right now, Guaranteed 20% attack up and 20% defense down. That being consistent just isn't enough for esports right now. Uh, with there being like higher quality ones out there, especially like Nightingale. She's a fr like 350 and she's a berserker. So no matter what level you have her on, as long as you slap a taunt on, like she's going to function better as an esports. And I know this is the. I know this is a Lancer list, and I'm bringing up Nightingale. That it's for comparison's sake. That there are 
there are more characters that might be better than her. But, like, esports is something, like, not a lot of people do, like, because it also requires you to have probably higher than MP5 of Ellie and you to purposely not level it. So, again, like, at MP1, technically, yes, but that also means MP1 not leveling. So, that's also why she's here. Like, it would be better than me trying to put her somewhere here when, like, there is no case I would, like, choose her because, again, she's AoE. She's not even single target. So, yeah. It's for her sake that she's here. Otherwise, I would have to put her, like, C or D for her trying to stand on her own. Next up is Shisho. Uh, Shisho might just sweep and take EX just because of like what her setup is now. It's consistent as shit and just has really, really absurdly high damage. And you not running Black Rail isn't the biggest deal with her anymore. Uh, as long as you're using her and her, like, optimal team comp, which is just having Summer Wu come in and eventually die, or hopefully die quickly, which, again, uh, depends on the boss fight, because some boss fights, you break the first bar, and then they clear the field, uh, which... You don't need to have a low-level character for that, especially if it's an AoE Berserker doing that. Um, but, yeah. Upstairs, uh, base stack a little low, but not so low that it's unbearable. HP very, very high. Like, we're almost pushing 15k, which is, like, definitely on the upper ends for five stars. Uh, star attribute, so she's, like, you... It's hard to exploit weaknesses against Shisho because she's star. Uh, there are there are very very few anti star. Um, yeah, BB is literally the only character that has anti star, and is also a reason why, like for the current Lotto on uh, NA Charlemagne, uh, starting tomorrow is going to be a huge obstacle for people because there is no anti star. You have like it's either you're going in with a uh, class advantage, and then you're still gonna you're gonna run into issues with Bradamante. So even if you are able to nuke Charlemagne, you'll still have problems. Um, but yeah, that's just star in general. Uh, MP charge at point seven one. Uh, she has fairly good base cards for a long time though. Like the way she used to refund was Arts Buster Buster, but with Mighty Chains it got so much easier for her. It's like MP Buster Arts, and she regens just so much uh, MP from that. Um, all right, first skill. It's chance base, but with the new, with her buff second skill, it's not chance base. So it's 50% crit damage, 500% star weight for three turns, full turn of evasion. Prime Primeval Rune buff, 50% uh, quick up for one turn, and 20% buff success rate for three turns with a 20 battery. So it's a little awkward battery-wise. Like, you might have to waste some charge. It is what it is. But you guarantee get uh, these, these effects. Then third skill is where they just tuck off the brakes and let Shisho run rampant. Uh, upgraded her God Slayer from B to EX, which is, it's fucking Shisho. She literally became immortal by being so inhuman and killing gods. This makes so much sense. They made her 100% power mods three turns now. So if you fight someone with Divinity, 100% power mod. Undead, 100%. If you make someone that's divine undead with Wu Zetian, that is 200% power mod. For context, that is more than double what running Black Rail 
will give you for Shisho. Her own power mod helps her out more than like the best CE in the game. Or what most people would would consider the most CE, the best CE in the game. And on top of that, if she uh whenever she attack so i believe this also applies to her mp uh she gets 20 battery so it makes successive uh mping with her significantly easier than what it ever was yeah so even with her own like assuming you pop this on turn one no matter what kind of uh hand you have as long as you have mana loading and you don't pop this like as long as you get a brave chain you are guaranteed to uh mp with her next turn because you get 60. Like, there's no conceivable way you uh don't get enough charge and you might not even need to pop this uh although you always want to pop this skill the same turn you pop this skill uh Yes to mana loading, no to skill reloading, or it's not, if you get skill reloading, it's not the, a huge deal, uh, just because it's harder to fit cooldown reduction in quick teams. But she can do some nasty stuff if you're, like, actually focused on cooldown reduction. MP, uh, guaranteed stun, uh, but unlike uh, Dante, she isn't, she wasn't able to loop back to her MP that easily. Nowadays, it's a lot easier for her, especially, again, in Mighty Chains, where she, her arts card is the last in the chain. Um, She can insta-kill, but no one really... You don't bank on this. If it happens, it's really funny, but that's about it. Yeah. If Wu Zetian didn't exists she'd be a or b but wu zetian is a thing and then cosro drop came out and then now you can get like card buffs on plus she shows buster cards along with all the other shit you can give her uh like yeah she she fits comfortably in ex again if she wasn't able to enable the power mod consistently even like because undead you can always do you just need Wu Zetian. Uh, Divinity, it would be more conditional if Divinity wasn't as common as it is. Like, re re again, real quick before I move on. Um, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh. Okay. So this is 120 servants. 123 servants out of like 400 something. She ha she naturally has this power mod against almost a third, if not if not a third, a fourth of the characters in the game. Then you have all the bosses. Divinity is not an uncommon thing for bosses to have. Yeah. MP1 just has ridiculous buffing potential now. All right. Uh, Lartoria. And after this one, I, I want a brief break just so I can eat and get water. And then we're right back into this. Um. Lartoria got a buff a while ago. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really change that much for her. Um, uh, yeah. All right. Base attack, really high for a four-star. HP on the lower side, but not anemic. Star weight, star gen, uh, Lancer numbers. So I'm not going to... I'm going to try not to even bring this up. I'm used to bringing this up in Lottos, but they pretty much uh, all Lancers uh, have this pretty, pretty much these stats, 12% star gen and 90% star weight. So just trying to save time and not repeat myself through this whole video or recording. Uh, MP charge healthy at 0.74. 
very similar sh to Shisho, if not, yeah, pretty similar hit counts to Shisho, but just worse. Um, all right, first skill, three times three turns Buster Buff with a 20 battery on, and the Buster Buff is at 55%, so just a little bit higher, but not groundbreaking. Second skill, really nice crit skill, but not amazing. Like this right now can be three turns and it's not, it's, it would be pretty standard. Um, yeah, like the numbers are fine. It's just the, the skill needs to last three turns. So she can also double stack something. Oh, and this is the more recent buff. Oh, she got tw uh, her Charisma E got upgraded from 12% to 20 along with getting power mods against lawful alignment and good alignment, and she can double stack these. Uh, it is a damn shame that this is only a 20 battery and not 30, because, oh my fucking god, she would be gross. Uh, MP, or, yeah, hang on. So, unfortunately, you pretty much can't take advantage of her kit. Uh, for Buster Farming, she lacks just 10%. Um, and this is honestly something I really would want to have double stacked because this is 40% attack and 120% uh, power mods. And Lawful Good is a very common uh, alignment. Like, there's even a CE for it for on JP for bonus spawn points. And this is also split, so they don't have to be Lawful Good. Like, I think uh, Salome has on her power mod. Like, she is only super, she only gets the power mod against lawful good, not lawful or good. Uh, so, good that they split it. But the cooldowns are already pretty low that normal Buster Farmer, you're not going to have an issue. However, wait, no, 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 no. Okay, so wait, for. Actually, no, this does work out. Um, I haven't really like thought about it, but five turn base cooldowns is enough for double Oberon, right? I think you have to do some funky stuff with the charge. Um, yeah, so after this, I'll, uh, just double check what, uh, double Oberon farming looks like for her, and then I will try to keep this in mind for other characters going forward, because I think, because, like, double Oberon started to, like, actually start working, um, with, Servants that have batteries on four turn cooldowns. Either they had the skill reduction intrinsic or they got a buff that let them reduce cooldowns. Um, and I'm talking about Aresh and Tak uh Takara Shingen. Um so yeah, now I actually want to double check the damage on that. Because they like by giving us this one stage of uh, one bit of cooldown reduction, they actually did uh, make it so double coin Skya isn't the end all be all for all buster farming anymore. Um, so yeah, buffed MP, damage to all enemies, uh, damage to all enemies, pierces defense, 60% chance to MP seal, and inflicts curse. Uh, th this curse is nothing. Um, would have liked them if they, like, this was a really early buff, too. Yeah, they just bought, they literally only buffed the damage. Yeah, that, that sucks. She got a shitty MP buff. Um, Yeah, so before I place, I'm uh, going to pause this recording and do some stuff in the place and then come back. All right, so. This is probably the biggest upset that I'm going to see here because 
this just added a new condition to like all farming. Um, once again, this was it was partially seen with Oresh and Takeda's Shingen, but it really shows it really just showed itself here with um, Lancer or Coria. So, any servant in the game. That has a battery on a five turn cooldown is able to get the benefits of double popping their MP while also running double Oberon. Or, sorry, double popping their skills while also running double Oberon. You might be thinking, okay, well, that makes turn two damage a lot worse than it could be. And. Uh, honestly, I didn't look at turn two. I was mostly looking at uh, turn three damage, but yeah. So here's the results. And Lancer Artoria Alter can do um, double Oberon Vich farming. Uh, and she needs, if she wants the best damage, uh, she starts from 60. Otherwise, you can just use the case scope, and the damage honestly doesn't change that much. It's literally, um, sorry, it's it's literally you're getting fifteen percent more, uh, buster up or whatever other effect you want on the fifty CE. Um, pr like pretty much if you're not if you don't have um, Battle Olympia or Participation of the King. Or summer anniversary, like participation of the king is just the best because it's highest buster up. This is like five percent less than that, but you get buster crit damage. And then this one, you just get arts up. You trade the buster crit damage for arts up. But TLDR turn one, you're looking at forty five thousand. Turn two, you're looking at a hundred and thirty thousand. So holy shit, that's a huge jump. Oh wait, no, no turn. Turn two damage, it doesn't really change. Um, uh, but turn three damage really explodes and jumps from 40,000 to 263,000. Um, yeah. I am 90% sure, or... Not Servant, so it shouldn't have alignments. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure this does not... Caster, Attribute... Yeah, it does not have Lawful or Good, because it's not a Servant. So this is a huge jump in damage, uh, but... This is pretty restrictive. Like, you have to, like, if you're not far farming archers, I wouldn't recommend farming like this, uh, unless you also plan on doing carding. But the fact that she can even do farming at all is a huge jump from what it was before. So, I might even have to go back and look at the other lists, but this is such a very niche case. This only works if the battery is on a five turn cooldown base or uh, with a pen five. Sorry, this is all with a pen five. Um, so it needs to have a base um, five turn cooldown uh, with a battery on it. Or, yeah, so the requirement is just battery on a four turn cooldown. And that's essentially how you do this. So it's either a pen five on its a five turn. Uh, if you have skill cooldown reduction in your own kit, then it can be six turns, but wow. Um, to put this into perspective, 263,000 damage and this is the low roll for it too. That's the low roll. Um, that's higher than a rush in her nor like in this standard farming setup, which Aresh, this isn't her best. Um, it's comparable to Romulus. 
and it like it, it kind of shits on Lartoria. Oof. Like even Lartoria with rising mud rain, it's way more damage. Um. Yeah. I I am so surprised by this that she is like actually has a better farming setup. Um Like this isn't overtaking Melison whatsoever, but this is just like and also you can't use this event in events either. Mm. Yeah, and I'm still not happy with this skill entirely. Definitely not EX. Definitely not EX. But the Surprisingly effective. It's A or B. Hmm. B because the setup is harder to do. And it's it's not your supports, it's getting the CEs to actually do a little more damage because most people don't go for 60s. 60, like for the longest time, 60% CEs have been like, you don't need them. Like no servant actually can use them in farming. Well, now, now servants can actually use it in farming. Um, like originally I was going to say like one of her buffs should be a battery, but like when she's outputting this much damage, like, and she doesn't need double bitch, like if you're not fighting man attribute, um, Rich's value does go down. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Again, this isn't just a. This isn't just a farming tier list. Yeah, she can't, I can't put her in, where did I put her, B? I can't put her in A because this can be used up in one turn, like it's the hit, it's the hit based thing, it's a hit based and this being only one turn, that's, oh, that's, that's literally her one weakness for this, holy shit, that is truly unfucking fortunate, that really just sucks. All right, yeah, We're, we'll we'll move on now. But I I was not expecting to get stuck this early. All right, Karna, are you on this? No, but you should be. So I have to, I have to. Oh no, you are. Okay, so Karna. He can do farming now, um, but he is definitely more, he definitely wants to be more in a boss fight than he wants to be farming. Like Lance Artoria now out damages him, but that is like heavy, heavy double Oberon. Yeah, like all of these servants up here just have better turn two damage. So if turn two is where you're lacking, that's where Lortorio will uh, slack. But Karna, he just consistently goes up. And this SE, yes, he has SE on his MP. All right. So base attack, good number. Almost at uh, 12K HP. A little anemic, but not concerningly anemic. Uh, MP charge, good refund on his two face cards. His buster cards are kind of boring, but is what it is. Uh, reduces debuff resistance. This is guaranteed to land at 500%. Like the enemy is taking all the debuffs. 
there are very few servants that will still have enough magic resist to like fight off like so this uh this debuff or any other debuffs you land or you want to put on that turn. Buster up and MP damage. Uh, you can pop this back to back turns. Uh, so turn two and turn turn three, you can have this up. And a guaranteed 30 battery with the latest buff. Star gen up 100%. Crit damage up 50%. And 40 star bomb. Uh, your arts cards are guaranteed to make stars. And when you double stack this, forget about it. Like you make so many goddamn stars. For damage, you can double stack. This is the only offensive buff he can double stack, uh, which is why his numbers look pretty low on here. It's literally because he only gets to double stack crit damage and that's it. Honestly, I'm surprised his numbers are even that high to begin with because he out he does out damage Lart uh, Lartoria like that. But Karna has a buffed MP, so that's the main reason. Debuff resistance, uh, riding A for more quick is like barely okay quick cards at three hits. Um, mana skill reloading doesn't matter that much for him, uh, but mana loading does for his farming. Uh, anti divine and bus res down after damage. This is unfortunate. Uh, but it does mean his buster crits hit a whole lot harder. <laughs> um, hmm. This is, wait, no, this is on a six turn. Yeah, so Karna going in B is, it's strictly because his uh first and second skill, like, I don't mind the first skill being the way it is, um, but I would, like, I would like it if this lasted longer than a single turn because it means it's easier for him to land this every time. <clears throat> like the first time you pop this skill, uh, this is guaranteed to stick, but sub subsequent NPs, not so much, which will affect his damage. So, yeah, his buster buff being only one turn, it's unfortunately... It's unfortunate, but it's not the biggest deal when he does ramp. He does have some kind of ramp up. So, yeah, Karna can get a lot better. I really think he can get a lot better. So, I'm going to put him on B for right now. But pretty much, like, pretty, it's a lot easier for them to buff Karna and put him in A than it is Lartoria. Because. What are they? They can't do much besides double buffing the MP uh, and adding a whole new effect on her second skill when she kind of just needs more star. Like, she kind of just needs more stars and to make it three turns. <clears throat> and then I would, it, she would be solid enough to go into A, but Karna, you can just get so much better. Next, Beyond. Beyond is of a case where he is in a very, very crowded space of AoE arts lancers, and he has to compete with uh, Melt and Percival. Yeah, he has to complete with Melt, Percival, and Retra. And Retra is just going to out damage pretty much everyone because of power mods. Um, 
Yeah, Fion. He's got decent damage. He definitely has the def decent damage for this. Um, but looping consistency is going to be an issue. So low-ish base attack, 8.9k HP. A little higher, but not by that much. And for looping, you want the attack as high as possible because it multiplies with all your other buffs. MP charge at 0.55%. Uh, would be concerning, but he has stuff in his kit. Uh, arts cards, these are terrible. These are horrendously bad face cards. Um, these should be like at least... These shouldn't even be two hits. These should be like three or five or uh, three or four. Yeah, no, these should be three or four hit arts cards. The same with his quick cards. Uh, year one really fucked some servants up. Um, star gen, uh, party wide star gen, party wide MP gen. I mean, helps hit his MP actually make stars a little helpful, but the big part is the MPG. Gen region, uh, yeah, the party wide MP gen rate up of 30%. This is what Castoria gives, and this is for the most part what most servants get if they get an MP gain buff. Second skill, uh, 30% battery, uh, chance space evasion. Uh, base 60, but goes all the way up to 100%. Uh, charm runs down against females. Don't bring them to fight any servant that has a charm at all. It's, it's not going to go over well, especially not Kama. But, like, if you bring him to fight Kama, oh, my fucking God, good luck. Good fucking luck. And then one turn arts buff. Of it's at least forty percent, but this needs a buff really, really badly. Uh, mana loading for his farming doesn't really need skill cooldown, uh, unless we're talking uh longer fights, which is always just gonna be helpful. Uh, his bond CE, uh, his MP, damage to all enemies, mental debuff immunity. So even though like, yeah, this skill makes him weak to charm, his MP makes it so he is not. He can't be charmed or anything else. And reduces their attack after, uh, for three turns, base 10%. I would have really liked this to be a higher number, but is what it is. He is also going to be, because there is just characters that can do his farming better. He's super solid at doing it, but he he's just not going to be the best. Like overall, more damage, but refund is going to be more of a concern. <clears throat> yeah, refund is going to be more of a concern, and then like he also doesn't have anything to follow up. So even after the MPs, he's not going to have much more to work with. Yeah, not not damage wise. And not, not in the earlier turns either. He has to hold this until turn three. So he's passable. His looping is definitely passable um, and works in a lot of places. But in general, you're going to look for a stronger AoE Lancer. Next, Bryn. Base stack, 11.5k. Good uh, average number. Really high HP, though, at almost 15k. Uh, okay, chart. No, uh, compared to Theon, this is way better. Um, 1.07 charge. She crits on the art, arts card. It's going to give her a good chunk. But she's a buster servant, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, I believe she can do single core looping. Mm, yeah, 30 battery, so that's a yes. Uh, this is a very weak 
Mana Burst Flame. This needs to be buffed. Uh, so, it, yeah, this is weak. 30 battery, credit attack chance down, MP damage down. Star weight, targetable. Oh, 3,000%. 3, 3, good. 40% uh, crit, uh, crit damage that she can pop on herself and double stack. Um, reach, uh, no, this is on six turn. Never mind. I was going to say something. Doesn't apply here. Um, yeah, 40% crit damage. All she gets to double stack. Mana loading for single core farming. Or multi-core, I guess. Uh, she can't really take advantage of that of this. Uh, besides making uh yeah, no, she already can do back to back turns, so this is not happening. Although technically speaking, you can double pop this on turn two, but I don't think you want to do that. Uh, and that's because this drops down to a four turn with skill four, and then two coin Skya batteries and you're back up to this is back off cooldown so if you really need to you can it's just not recommended to do because turn two usually doesn't have the highest hp uh damage to one enemy party star gen up 50 percent and super effective damage against brinhold's beloved this is a very weird niche um, and they kind of can just make it so whoever she wants has it. Like when they make new characters, um, it's it's who Brynhild believes has the mindset of a hero that she really likes. And I believe it's like people willing to do what they have to, uh, no matter the circumstances. Uh I don't know all these characters' lures, but a lot of these characters are willing to face adversity. Like, fighting someone stronger than themselves uh, and not... Uh, I don't fucking know. I'm not trying to explain what every trait means. You're asking me to get inside the head of a yonder, eh? Hey? That, that is some dangerous fucking territory. I'm not even going to try to think I actually understand her. Um, yeah, her, I don't think I have this or, oh, no, there is a single core red sheet. What? Oof. Is this broken now? Oh, that's unfortunate that that's broken. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna have to go off it from here. Ah, uh, shit. All right, so Rin, her base MP damage. Unfortunately, it's comparable to someone that doesn't even have a buffed MP. Yeah, like she hits hard, harder than Melison, but Melison isn't famous for her single target arts form. Um, she has the SE, but a lot of other characters are just going to scale better with buffs because she just doesn't have her own. Again, crit damage is going to be her focus, but um, that kind of can get oversaturated really, really quickly. Uh, like, she's functional. Yeah, she she's at least at the very least functional. There's. She just needs more uh, 
stuff she can double stack. Yeah, they they just need to they need to buff her first skill. And then I could put her a little higher. But right now this is just like this this skill itself holds her back so much. All right, next. Lee Chuin. Good base attack for a four star uh, HP. Eh. I don't really care about it that much. Char uh, almost caught myself. I'm going to be charged at 0.52. This is a little better because I believe he's like he is more focused on crits. Um, so yeah, this being a little low because like again, modern servants point five two percent uh is at least uh four hit arts cards or it tends to be more four hit arts arts cards. I can't English right now. Um yeah, one hundred percent crit damage. Uh Okay, no, I, I remembered why I don't like this character. <sighs> yeah, no, I... Unfor unfortunately, I was just reminded why I don't like this character. Because they are so heavily based on their supports for them... For him to be better. Uh, at the very least, Assassin Lee Shuen has buffs that last longer than one turn. This guy has, like, literally nothing that lasts for one turn. So if you're dumb, you're gonna use everything in in one go. No battery, no skill reloading. Uh, extra attack. It will be good for star gen and damage, not for regen. Defense Pierce. This is this is his ramp up. He ramps up defense. The issue is. Him getting back to his MP. His three hit MP, okay, but it's single target. Um, yeah, he wants to do like a full art spray chain, and he just does not have the stars needed to do that. Uh. MP damage, Li Shuen. 46 with a. Again, how high is this arts buff? A 50 arts buff? Well, wait, a 50 arts buff and you only just barely beat Melison? What? No. No, 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 no. I will take Dobrynia any day of the week over him. Even in a, like, bursty raid, if I don't get his cards in the turn, like, that burst doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. No bad time for him to release, because I already know Dobrynia is, like, going to be higher than him. I, I again this is personal preference but like this is not a modern kit e like even in raids i don't think i can justify this because all it takes is for him to like not get cards if like and that happens so fucking often like crit servants like this uh especially if they're crit for only one turn in raids like they get screwed by if they don't have anything they are so heavily reliant on the support at that point that literally any other servant that has some kind of buffs would be just be better. Because again, it's only a mana burst and that's it. Like that flies for five stars more often than not because they have higher base stats. Mm -mm. Yeah, can't make, make them higher. Oh boy. Fucking imagine that Lartoria is placed lower or on the same tier as Lulper.
Base attack is low. It's definitely on the low star side for a five star. Uh, it's on the higher low side. Just below 11k, but this, uh, she would have really wanted higher base attack. Uh, HP very, very high at almost 16k. And you can see here at level 100, uh, she is pushing 17,000. MB charge healthy at 1.1, but we also saw this deck earlier on a different character, and I'm just not the biggest fan of it. But she gets a lot of her refund, not from her face guards, but from MP and her big battery. So this is the biggest sign of contention across all of her competition. They did not buff her mana burst in a way that helps her um, do farming. Uh, not Or at least double Vich. This really just fucked her up. And I think at this point, they need to buff her charisma and give her cooldown reduction. But the again, the issue with that is that it makes it too similar to a rush. Yeah, Lartoria is in a really, really weird spot where she's like in between Lartoria and Arresh for what role she wants to have. They're not going to buff this skill again. They need to buff this charisma. And, and she also needs an MP buff too. Yeah, no, she's, she might actually get placed lower. Um, higher turn two damage, but yeah, turn one looks the same as Artoria's turn two. Like even my rising mud rain doesn't help her that much. It really fucking sucks with that. Yeah, so 50, 50 Buster buff, and double power mod. This needs to be buffed and bring it to 20 with a new effect. And 50 battery with a full cleanse. Uh, skill cooldown, I... Mana loading matters more and it's for multi-core. Yeah, and then MP, invul, damage to all enemies, and then charges gauge. Um, so to be fair to um Lalter or Lartoria, I will just pause again. And just double think whether or not she can actually do like double Oberon or something. Um, wait. Yeah. So give me a second to do a little bit of testing just to see this. Okay. So back from the lab and yeah, no. You. Can't start with uh black rail. She can't use double Oberon for a little more damage. Um to like go well with this third skill. Um Yeah. Lartoria is I don't think she's that much worse. But the fact that I'm putting them on the same tier is just telling. Uh, Lartoria needs just way more buffs. I don't know why that she's only gotten one buff while Lolter has gotten three. Um, so at that point, it's I don't feel this is a fair comparison, but it is what it is. 
uh, if you had between these two servants, like this one is I kind of just gets you more damage in farming. Uh, definitely more risky, but it, if you're gonna card wave two, or if you don't do enough damage and you have to card, like this is just the better character. I spent like 10 minutes on this testing, so. Uh, unfortunate. All right. What t shirt, Tomomo? Uh, all right. So, lower base attack, higher HP. This is an appearance. Of, okay. Yeah. What t shirt, Tomomo? Um, I don't know, gotta stop myself. Uh, MP charge at 1.05. Uh, okay gains on this, but right now she's like a buster farmer, solo core or multi core, so you're not too concerned with uh, arts card refund, extra attack weak. At the very least, this is a base 20%, so the chance of them actually buffing the skill, not likely. But it's 20% attack and sergeant, which gets double, but only for male allies. Uh, so Oberon in that team when you double stack. Not uh, not uh charm one enemy reduces their defense of 30%. Uh inflex curse and then charges their gauge. Um Draco also has the same part. How she forces the gauge charge. And thankfully, Goddess Metamorphosis got buffed, uh, and they got rid of the chance for her to stun. They made the crit damage three turns, star gen three turns for herself, and they gave her a 30 battery. Definitely want this and this. So you can pop it more than once in your farming. So if turn two is giving you, or turn one is giving you troubles, you're given the chance to double pop. So I do think that is good for niche cases. And if you're fighting a boss, that means another defense down, you're actually able to land uh, for wave three. Her MP has been buffed, but is SE against males. J just males. So many, so many servants, they had to just like, no, nope, we're just going to collapse this. Literally every other, any male servant. So all the male archers, especially Robin, especially Robin Hood, uh, cup their balls for protection every time Tomomo shows up. Because this is a whopping 24 archers out of the whole list i believe it's like it's if it's less than 50 archers in the game then tom molancer has as super effective against half of her intended targets then you go to berserkers not exactly the same uh it's sitting at 19 but that is still too significant uh to like not consider it. Yeah, so Tama Lancer cleanly, cleanly goes into A. Distinctively better than Bryn Hill. Although they've, at this point, they do pretty much similar things. They have some overlap, but Tomomo kind of just has more stuff. Yeah, like, Bryn has a buffed MP. And she technically does more damage. But Tomomo uh, is just more universal. And again, all she needs is a buffed MP, and then she goes... Like, if you don't think she's sitting in here and you want to swap, sure, but, like... She gets an MP buff and then she just stays there. Cause uh, oh, keep clicking the wrong thing. 
Uh, MP1 becomes MP2. And Tama Lancer's MP2 damage is like literally right there with Bryn. So literally it is. Um, all right, that's not the best comparison though. Oh, oh, wait, hold up. All right. Yeah, it's 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 literally the difference of a buffed MP. And Tama Lancer just has better fate. Like her third skill is just better than a lot of Bryn's kit. So that again has a lot to to do with it. Uh, Kiyohime. Very similar refund profile to Shisho. Um, she just she has better uh gains across the board though. Like she has a fifty percent higher base uh MP gain than Shisho. Uh, and very similar hit counts too. Her extra attack is just not going to be as good as Shisho's. Uh, base attack it is lower than when you want it for four stars, but not by that much. Uh, first skill got buffed recently. Uh, reduces the enemy credit attack chance for three turns. Flicks burn on them. Uh, 20% battery. Uh, debuff on self. Or, so she puts spread of fire and it just ramps up, uh, burn damage. So, again, comes up where this is a servant with a 20 battery on a 5 turn cooldown. So, you can use her for double over on farming, but this is a single target. So, I don't want to say that you're going to immediately go to that. Um, I probably would still be doing double Vich and not double over on because for single core farming or single target farming, uh, damage thresholds are definitely going to be much more of a thing. Uh, yeah, no, I would not recommend double over on Vich for characters if they're not AoE. Because, like, you have to hold back so much of Oberon's uh, buffs. Yeah, you, ha you have to hold back so many. Um, But, yeah, if you're using Honey Lake, awesome. You immediately apply the burn. 30% buster up for three turns. Good. Can be double stacked. Uh, defense down 30%. And this is like pretty much guaranteed to land, and you buff their attack, but you might run into some issues for this. You buffing the enemy's attack might actually get you killed. Uh, Madness Enhancement EX, Magic is SD. Uh, these two probably. Uh, single target Buster MP, uh, with almost guaranteed chance to skill seal. So, yes, be very, very afraid of this because if you're not careful, you will actually die from this. You skill seal them and they make sure they attack three turns or three times that turn. Uh, so, unless you have a taunt CE, be aware that Kiyohime is in danger of getting killed. Let's more burn on. Uh, her burn niche, not too much. She needs. I feel she needs power mod or SE against burn. Uh, if they do the burn, they're going to do something similar to what they did to Baba and she, where they're going to make this happen before damage and they're going to get for ramping up uh, burn SE. Which I, I feel that's, yeah, no, that's, I, I think that's exactly how they're going to do it. Because then she kind of is just a, yeah. That's I think that's what they're gonna do. Uh Kiyohime Summer. It, she's not. I would definitely take take Bryn over Kiyohime. Easily. Yeah, no, because the only thing she's double stacking is Buster. And Buster is like very abundant. Like, yes, 
He's also double stacking uh, a defense down. But if she, she's not fighting a boss, then this doesn't matter for double stacking. You're putting it on, and she already can do that. Yeah. Yeah, she goes, she goes below Bryn. Next, Vlad extra. Base attack a little lower, HP a little higher. He is supposed to be a tank, so that makes a lot of sense. Star weight, star gen. I uh, keep bringing that up. It's just out of habit, chat, I swear. Um, MP charge at 1.1%. Uh, he's going to be getting hit a lot, which is why it's also good he has this. A little more gains. Um... First skill, debuff resistance 100%. Uh, 2.5k heal. 40% defense for one turn and a 30% uh 20% attack buff for three turns. Dracul military tactics, 20% party wide MP damage, 20% buster up for th uh three turns, and whenever he gets hit. He inflicts defense down. This lasts for five attacks, three turns. This is very, very nice uh, for harder fights where you're fighting a boss. Uh, uh, and to give context, uh, Eris has a skill that's similar to this, but she doesn't have the attack restriction. It's just three turns. And she, like it is very easy to ramp up like a hunt, like 90% defense down with Eris. So this caps out at 50. But no, this this is good. This is good. Uh third skill, uh 10 crit stars per turn and a taunt uh to self for one turn. Uh whether I want I do kind of mm, there's a lot of room for him to get buffed. I would want the taunt to be three turns, and I'd also want um, protection of faith, at least the defense, up to be three turns, or for him to get defense from his MP. Uh, MP ignores invincibility for one turn. Uh, thankfully, it activates first. SE against evil alignment, and it's single target. You cannot use him for single core farming. But as you can see, there's a lot of things that can go into him doing more damage. Uh, like his... Him in optimal scenarios is approaches servants with buffed MPs that have SE. Uh, but again, he has SE, so that's not... That's not the biggest sign, but he doesn't have a buffed MP. If they buffed his MP, oh my fucking god. Look at this. Look at this MP1 damage if they buffed his MP with... Like, holy shit. Yeah, Vlad is a character they're afraid of actually buffing. What the fuck? Like, especially because it's evil. Um, not sure how many evil archers there's going to be. But evil is like, damn, universal. One. Two. Three, four. Whoa. Okay, they got screwed on archers. There are not many evil archers. It's it's a it's a better use case to even bring up berserkers than it is archers. Oof. Uh, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. But right now, Vlad can only be used in either a boss fight or just a fight that isn't meant to be one turn. Um.
I I think it's very fair to put him on here because not only is he permanent, but that jump and MP damage, if you bring him to fight evil, is really crazy. Like you you can get this like relatively easily. He's not gonna be doing single core farming. But damn does he just function better than than Bryn. I was thinking about saying Tama Lancer, but no. No no no. Tama Lancer's like niche is like way better. Like he he struggles to hit on niche on class. Tomomo doesn't struggle. Tomomo just doesn't have that issue. Uh, this is a welfare, so we're not talking about her. Enkidu. Let's see if Enkidu goes up, uh, go goes down. Because I think I had him at EX, but it, or yeah, I think I had him at EX. Oh, also, wait, where the fuck is Melis? Where is hers? Yeah, no, I, I'm. Yeah, hang on. I'm just going to fix this real, real quick. I know I'm like stopping right in the middle, but there, there still is no point in talking about Melison. She's still EX. There's still no one that comes close to her damage, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, but back to Ikidu. Base attack is low for a five star. Like, this is actually low for a five star, not kind of low. This is low. Um, this is hitting a little too close to 10.5. Um, HP very high to compensate at 15k. Uh, MP charge 0.53, but they have four card, uh, four cards that get them gain. Uh, very hard to like fight against because sky attribute or no, not even sky is, is better than star, uh, in terms of you fighting them, but alignments, you can't buff and not that many people have anti-neutral unironically say is one, but say is an archer. So yeah, no, um, yeah, good. Good gains across the board. Five hit uh, arts card with 0.53 gain. He crits on this. He and Kidu gets so much. They get so much. First skill, 50% buster up and a chance to get quick or arts up. Uh, if you are not solo, this is very, very underwhelming. Uh, so straight up, uh, Enkidu is being ranked as a farmer. I do not want to try and rank them as a, uh, no, sorry, solo unit, not a farmer. Solo unit, not a farmer. You're not able to double stack this. If you wanted to do single core Lancer farming, um, he doesn't have anything he can double stack either. So I, I wouldn't, yeah, I would not think about doing solo core farming with him. Literally anyone would be better, including Bryn. Because at least she double stacks crit damage. And Kidu doesn't even get that. Uh, but yeah, if you're not solo, uh, this skill is going to be annoying. If you are solo, you have your choice. Well, or if you are solo, you're just going to click whatever cards you feel like. Uh, second skill removes uh, crit attack or reduces crit attack chance, removes their dodge. Uh, and you get a dodge for a turn, which is great survivability for him. And 10k heal, full cleanse, and a 50 battery, but this is on a 10 turn. What's up, name? Currently, um, recording some stuff for YouTube, but if you got, if you want to, going good. Farming Lotto, uh, 
no, I'm pretty much done with that for right now. Uh, this is uh, tier list stuff. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, Lancers, and I kind of want to get this stuff done before the end of the year, and I kind of have to start like now, otherwise I don't have time. Uh, he wants extra attack. He kind of doesn't care about anything else. If he's solo, he's only going to be doing extra attacks, so that makes sense. Uh, Anti-Berserker, nice to have. And he can use these, but he doesn't get the most benefit of it. Uh, MP, 200% uh, percent SC against Threat to Humanity. If they're a Berserker, awesome. Yeah, so it, it's not going to be Servants. Uh, that he can get uh, true class advantage against. It's pretty much only going to be bosses. Uh, and then defense down. Uh, activates first, so he always gets this. And stuns divine enemies. Yeah... One second. Why are you here? Uh, okay, so I got to get rid of her. She shouldn't be showing up here. Neither of these two. Um, or Reese. Okay, yeah, so I have way less than I thought for this. Um, yeah, and Ke there is no other solo Lancer. He he's still best solo lancer. All right. Um. So one, two. Uh. Where else? Three. Okay. This is gonna take. This is this. Oh, four. Yeah. This is gonna take way less time than I thought. Cause we're pretty much half halfway done. When I thought. All right. Uh. Yeah, uh, Lancers is full of low stars. Holy shit. Alright. Uh, Medusa Lancer. Or Medusa Lily. Yeah. Not bad. Um, very, very, very low base attack for four stars. Like, this is abysmal. Uh, HP looks like normal. What the fuck were they thinking on this? Uh, star weight. Uh, yeah, keep, keep bringing this up. Uh, this is just, uh, MP1, uh, for Lancers only. Uh, 0.44%. Uh, this makes sense with the gains. Yeah, no, I don't care about that that much. This makes sense. Uh, quick buster. Yeah, face cards are okay, but this low base attack sucks so much. Uh, charm one male enemy, 20% quick res down. Is this six, uh, 20% hard buff for her? Uh, monstrous strength of 30%, only one turn. And 30 battery. Debuff resistance plus God sense. So 42% debuff resistance. Need mana loading. Skill cooldown. Yes. No, because there's no way you're getting this back. You're not going to get this back in a normal turn, and you kind of don't want it. Uh, she does need this skill buff for it to last three turns. Or or even two. Three or two. Either one would just be better. Uh, ramp up quick res down. Chance to stun. And the chance to stun is actually decent. And six set quick. Uh... I think I put her in C. Yeah, that's 
She has good stuff, but she needs that third skill buff, like, badly. Because then it becomes a carding thing. Yeah. It's hard to put her down, but, like, she, it will take her too long. But, yeah, it will take so her too long to burst someone down to the point they actually might, like, turn around and smack her. Like, it's like um, some big beefy guy is walking walking down the street and you keep harassing him with spitballs. Like, and the guy, and it's a normal guy, too. So he's like, okay, this is just a kid. Um, and then you keep doing it to him. Like, for the next three weeks, you keep doing it. He is going to turn around and scream at you, and then that kid is running the fuck away and, like, terrified, and they're probably not going to do it again for a while. That's, that's kind of how she's functioning right now. Uh, yeah, if this skill was buffed, it would be significantly better, but this is one turn... One turn of attack up is just not enough. Uh, all right, Raiko. One turn of twenty percent. It's it's one turn of thirty. But yeah, you're right. It's not good enough in the modern landscape. Like for raids, for raids it's fine. Like I have less issue with her in a raid than him, because you just like lead with the MP and quick, quick, and then she gets all that shit, and then she starts ramping up. Him, he he does not have that luxury. But it's like he's better than him, but not better, like not on Vlad's level at all. Like, if anything, he would go down, but I don't think he's, like, D. Uh, Raikou. More of a support than anything, honestly. Because 20% attack, star gen, targetable 40 buster, and a cleanse. And then she kind of just fucks with the star weight on this skill. Um... Magic resist, riding A plus, minus enhancement C, Vinity C. This shit just doesn't matter for her. And top berserker is cool though. The issue is her getting to MP. As a support, she works. Um. B tier support, not a single target. She is not being compared to Vlad, but B tier support. Attack buff and a 40 uh, card buff is nothing to fucking scoff at. Not when Nightingale is like actively being used in esports for her 40, for like the 50 um, buster up. Yeah, and uh, like at the very least, her MP does have utility. For multi core, if you get to it, yep. Right, I need my sweater. Um, yeah. Name honestly, uh, you came in here, and I honestly thought I was gonna get botted again because. Unfortunately, those bots are learning, but you are, you proved you are a real person by like saying lotto, maybe. No, nah, sorry. You already exposed yourself because bots don't know anything about the games they go into the channels for. If you are, if you are an AI, then, uh, Sakura, then we have BB encroaching the market. Which I'd rather just commit then. Ah, uh, all right, Parvati. 
very low base attack. This is horrendous for a four star. It is a good thing she loops as well as she does. Um, she got screwed over because her second skill gives so much raw attack. Um, yep. She was a great servant when uh, Quick was the meta. Uh, but she's kind of fallen off because she's not looping more than what she needs to. Or she's not looping to what she needs to. Um, but yeah, low base attack. HP is okay. MP charge is fucking ridiculous. Um, like, other servants that have this charge today that I looked at, all of them were single target. None of them were AoE. This is, like, a really stupid gain number to have if you're AoE. Um, especially if you're quick. Uh, gains, she has it. These are ridiculously good cards for a quick unit because she's going to crit on both on all three of these. Uh, and she even came with like the standard shit: quick up thirty percent, thirty percent MP gen. Uh, unfortunately, this is all one turn. Really fucking unfortunate. A fifty attack, uh, fifty defense, hundred percent star gen, and a hundred percent debuff res. Oh my god, it fucking sucks. They screwed over her base attack so hard. It's like she like you can use her in CQs and she just stun locks the shit out of people. But it's like this skill needs to get looked at first. But out goes a thing. So this isn't a demerit, but she does need an actual battery. Um So, yeah, Tar targetable battery, but it drains her by 10%. Uh, unless you're using Alco, you can't get rid of this. And even if you're using Alco, you still need to have 10% to activate the skill. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Uh, and that's on a five turn. Goddess Essence, Magic Resist combo, capping out at 42.5%. And then the... With this skill, she has a 144% debuff resistance for one turn. So you actually can fight off the ridiculous 150% chance of uh, a debuff landing for some that you sometimes see. Uh, mana loading, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, Anti-Alter Ego works, but you're not going to bring her to fight Alter Egos most of the time. Four hit AoE quick, 60% chance to stun, and an AoE party charge. She needs an MP buff. Parvati needs an MP buff. Like, more than the skill, she needs an MP buff. Uh, yeah, this is super scope damage. Um, I'm going to, like... Again, got to take a quick break with uh, this and just test to see if she actually could do black rail looping. Okay. Okay. So this sheet is truly, like, well done, out of date, because what the fuck is Parvati's refund? I had to switch take testing off casters because if she had an MP buff, and her OC gave her 30 back uh, at OC3. Like right here, the scaling, the base scaling was plus 10 instead of plus 5. Uh, she would have easily refunded 100% of her MP against casters. Like turn 1, you wouldn't have needed the battery. Uh, her first skill being essentially a 10% battery for herself Honestly, just pairs really, really well with Oberon. Uh, there is no wasted charge, which is why I think this sheet is the way it is. Like, it is in counting Oberon, and Oberon with mana loading does make Parvati's looping cleaner. It's only Parvati that this is going to happen to. Valks do not have this leeway. I don't even think they refund that much in comparison. We'll test that later, too. Um... But this damage, for as much as I shit-talked her low base attack, is equal 
or on par with her competition that are like in the black rail looping. Like she does more damage than Brunamar doing triple Scotty. Again, Parvati's using Oberon, uh, Black Row with Oberon, so that's not fair. Um, but this is, like, seriously good damage. It really sucks that her crit potential is pretty much non-existent. Uh, she does not have her own crit buff. She only has this one turn of 50% attack. So she needs a buff. But I'm willing to put her in A and I forgot I needed to make an A plus. Yeah, th this this was fucking surprising. I'm glad I'm actually taking the time to do the calcs because hmm. Yeah, she gets her own. It, it's he's the only Buster servant that can actually uh that can literally do the ninety plus plus uh and six slot it. Your party cost is ridiculously high, but she can do it. She can do it better than Summer Abuki. Oh wait, no, I actually didn't do the real test with her. Yeah, I didn't do the real test with the Buki whether she could do the ninety plus plus, uh, six slotting. It, yeah, no, that never mind. Take that back. Yeah, like this is not a lot for Buster farming, and Melison just so happens to be the only Buster farming servant in the game that can actually do this lotto and not run into many issues. Uh. Oh, no, I'm talking about six slotting with uh, Lotto C's. Even she doesn't need the damage, and I don't think she needs the, like, any other C. I'm pretty sure she can do it with just the Lotto C. I can, uh, I can test that in a little bit, though. Uh, oh, right, hang on. I'm back. So, all right, uh, next up. Neza. Yep, yep. Okay, Neza, decent base attack. HP, okay. MB charge at 0.72. I think this is what Karna has. Does Neza have Karna's deck? I think so. But yeah, no, this looks like what Karna had. Uh... This needs to be buffed because these are only 20% each with a little bit of crit damage, but it, this is not this is not enough. Uh guts with a battery, it's only a 20% battery. Um now I like I was talking about like hit count wise. I think uh Karna has uh, the exact same. I oh, know extra attack is here too. Fuck, are you? Uh, 0.7233. Yeah. Oh, no, it's better. It's Karna's deck, but better. Yeah, no, it's straight up. Like, it's Karna's deck, but better in every sense of the word, uh, except extra attack. Um, they're probably gonna buff this skill eventually. Uh, power mod against demonic, fifty percent, and then thirty percent defense against demonic, fifteen stars, star weight, and a cleanse. A good buff. That was such a good buff. I don't like Nessa that much, but like this was such this turned his shit skill into a good one. Yeah, especially because it didn't even give crit damage. Uh, only magic resist A. Oh shit, is music not playing? Yeah, it's not gonna affect the recording, but I just don't want Twitch to be bored. 
Um, this, but the is gonna need another buff. And fix it. Make this six, because they're not against giving uh five turn up one uh one turn down for guts. Make this thirty, and then like one other effect. Uh, and then you're going to need this if they don't like if they don't reduce cooldown, you just need this. If they do reduce cooldown, you don't need it. But I kinda do want them to not reduce the cooldown because that way this buff is stronger. If they don't have to worry about making the cooldown shorter, then they can focus more on making this buff better. And then you just get both best of both worlds instead of a shitty eight, shitty hand on that. All right, three hit AOE, three K burn, and MP damage with like decent scaling. Oh, but not a buffed MP either. Uh, does so. Oof. Demonic SC, nice. Um, that isn't even that much of a jump. Uh, but they're not gonna do that. Uh, they're not. 26. They're no, no, they're not gonna buff MP. Yeah, no, like, especially not with Lancer Alter already being up here. Like, I think they'd, I think they'd buff an SSR five, uh, MP again. Like Lartoria before they buff Neza. Because they can buff Neza's MP and it's still not going to do that much. Yeah, no, I, I'd rather they buff Neza's skill and give another effect. Oh, no, this is a buff. I'm blind thinking that this wasn't a buffed MP. Oh my god. That honestly makes everything worse. I don't know how, but that actually made everything worse. Uh, how the fuck do you have a buffed MP and that's your damage? That, that honestly makes no fucking sense. Ali makes sense. Neza doesn't. And Brit makes sense. Because of it, yeah, see over here. And it's too... Yeah, no. Needs buffs. Needs buffs. Yeah, no. No, okay, name. We can't say that. We can't say the only thing. Because Emiya. Because Emiya is a thing. And he might get... He might be the first servant to get six buffs and get his MP buff twice. They have buffed MPs twice before. It's just not common. Vlad got his MP buff twice. Medea needs her MP buffed again because her scaling is shit. Um, well, Vlad, Vlad is the only one off the top of my head I know got as a double buffed MP. But they, they you like for that to happen, they have to really fuck uh something up. Um Neza doesn't have an attack buff, so they just need to buff this skill and give Neza an attack buff. Call it a day. That that should fix a bunch of things, but what the fuck? That sheet that list isn't everything, but it is telling. Rush. And this one I do have to do testing again to get the actual turn three numbers for her black rail farming. Um but she is another case where this list 
is not showing her actual best farming method because she is a black rail looper now. Uh, base attack gets low. HP is super high. This is the highest HP we've seen all day at above 16,000. He can double Koyan, but it's better if she double Oberons uh, because she has Earth attribute super effective on her MP. Uh, and an enemy can't be both Earth and Man attribute. So it's like all Vich is giving is 50% Buster. That's it. Like, if you can get cooldown reduction a different way, uh, you're able to, like, move from Koyan to another buffer, specifically Oberon, because he just buffs uh, much more for turn three. Uh, MP charge 0.54% with a six hit arts card. If even if you don't crit on this thing, you will get like 50 MP gain back <coughs> or something really, really stupid. Uh, when her skills are up, uh, extra attack goods weak, arts card very strong, and quick cards are pretty good too. First skill is what lets her black rail loop. Uh, uh, okay. So it originally was chance based, but the buff made it so you can level up to make the chance 100%. And it's debuff immunity for one turn, insta kill immunity for one turn, buff removal resistance by one turn. <coughs> Gives herself an invul for one turn and then reduces her cooldown. You cannot kill her unless you pierce invul. And even if you do, you're probably not killing her. You can't take her buffs, can't debuff her, and she doesn't take damage. Second skill, 50% buster up for one turn and then a 50 battery. And blessing of her party defense up 30, uh, 20%, MP gen up 30%. And max HP. Uh, you cannot double stack this, unfortunately. Um, and I believe all these effects show up under this, not showing individually. Um, I'll double, I'll double check that though. Uh, debuff resistance twelve point five percent, eleven percent arts up. And a 22.5% uh, debuff resistance. So base debuff resistance is 35%. And then she can ramp that up even more. Uh, yes to mana loading. Yes to this. It's how she can do her black rail farming. And MP has been buffed. Super effective against earth attribute. If you have blessing of her, another 20% attack buff. Put attack chance down. Uh, resistance up by 20%. Insta kill immunity for the party by th for three turns, and then another buster up, but this is like pretty low. My fucking god, they buffed the shit out of her. Deserved. All right. Uh, so I'm going to do this stuff in the place for damage testing because this is so low in compared to what I know she can do. So this is Aresh when she does black rail looping. Uh, a viewer actually told me in a DM uh, back in August that Aresh and Takeda Shingen were able to do looping like this because uh, their first skill had the cooldown reduction. We saw this with Lartoria, and this is this being realized with black rail instead of starting from 60. Uh, so 136,000 damage uh, neutral without doing her SE. As you can see here, uh, the only comparison is Mellison starting in third ascension and starting with 50%. Just shows how busted Mellison is that he, even if she's not uh, black, like even if she's not black rail looping, she still does really, really strong damage.
Um, and big issue with this kind of farming is the fact that this turn two damage is even lower than turn one. Uh, so you are going to have to do some kind of carding. And yeah, so Arash is first one in A+. Plus because she has a chance to touch Melison damage. Um, but that is not as frequent as it as she'd maybe want it to be. And for Melison, just double Vich Oberon is like she gets all the Buster crits too. And like none of the downsides. Uh so yeah, Rush A plus. Valks, another character I have to test the looping for, but do not expect this to be anything like, uh, uh oh, maybe high base and begin. All right, so base attack 8,000. Oh, no, 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 bad. This is way too low than it should be. HP is four star levels of HP. I don't know why they wanted to make this character this tanky, but damn. Damn, damn, damn. Uh, MB charge is healthy at 0.86, and these hit counts aren't great. The quick is weak, and arts is weak. How the fuck does this character come out after Parvati? I, I'm genuinely curious what they were thinking. Uh, similar to Parvati, she has the first... Skill similar, 30% card buff, but instead of MP gain, it's MP damage. And that bites them in the ass. Because they would have been probably pretty gross if they had MP gain on this skill. Second skill, dodge one attack three turns. Debuff immunity, one time three turns. And 1,000 damage uh, reduction, three attacks three turns. Third skill, 10% gauge per turn. 1,000 heal up. Per turn and star gen ten stars per turn on a for three turns. Yeah, no, I I don't know what they actually were fucking thinking. Debuff res divinity, um, skill reloading, mana loading. I don't even think it matters because they can't really take advantage of it in the first place. Um. MP seven hit AOE quick and chance to insta kill. Insta monic too. Thank God it's after damage. Like I think this servant could manage to be even worse than Lancer Aris if this was before damage. Um. Yeah, so quick stop in the lab, but I'm pretty sure this is not going to end well. So, back from the lab, and this is just straight disappointing. Um, as you can see, I had to boost up Valks to MP5 120, and they still couldn't black for a loop against neutral uh, with Oberon. They are able to black rail loop, but they cannot use Oberon if their refund isn't good enough. So if they're fighting neutral, it um and that that's pretty much it. They can't fight neutral unless it's archers. Uh rider and casters you will actually be able to black rail loop against, but that is full neutral damage. Uh, I test neutral damage just to test. Uh, I don't recommend you bring about like a lancer to fight riders all the time or casters. Um, against uh, the normal testing, Valks are able to black rail loop, which is why I had to go back to um, lancer extreme node to test this. Le it's literally an overkill problem, and. These two went from five hits of overkill at MP1 level 80 or needing or five out of seven to six out of seven as I went higher. And that's it. They cannot kill and do any better than this. Um, 
So by that logic, Valks go to B. They are surprised. They're surprisingly more effective than I thought. You can run them with Black Row, or better yet, another um, CE that gives you MP damage and quick up. If you give Valks that, they probably can do uh, something a little better. Uh, Chocolate Heaven. Yeah, Chocolate, Chocolate Heaven. Uh, but I didn't test uh, with that CE specifically. Um, because this affects too much of a looping. While when I tested with um Lancer, Alter, that was with a like a sixty percent with plus fifteen percent Buster. That that's all. It that's only fifteen percent Buster. This it this impacts looping far more. Is you're trading raw MP damage for two different things that that affect your gains. Uh, I don't expect anyone to have this maxed out. Not many people do because it is a Valentine's CE from, I believe, say, Shonagun. Yeah, so if you are not rolling on this banner, you're not going to have the CE, uh, whether it's here or here. So, Valks, you're in B, but you are literally... Literally one buff away from go um going to A and being swappable with uh Harvati. Like at this point it is whoever gets the buff first. Yeah, th this is actually fun getting to do the test thing uh on stream. Alright, Ibaraki. Uh 9.1k attack. Low HP. MP charge healthy at 1.06. Um, good extra attack. Weak arts card, but not super weak. It's just if you don't crit on it, you're you're out of luck. Uh, these quick cards are good. 20% attack for the party. Uh, 30% MP damage and an additional 30% MP gain. Mo better than most uh, demonic nature of Oni. Second skill, disengage with max HP, not great. Third skill, star weight, crit damage of 50% on a four turn cooldown. And either you increase your buff resistance or you lower it. And there's a 50 50 chance of this happening. Uh, yeah, sorry, debuff resistance, because the MP re reduces uh, star weight. But. This first skill, or this second skill, is more either you roll this or after you pop MP. Uh, these really don't matter. Uh, uh, skill reloading does, because that gets us on a really short cooldown. Um, and bitch, you can pop this back-to-back -back turns. Or double pop it if you top, uh, pop two bitches this turn. Uh, MP, defense pierce to one enemy, reduces star gen, gain massive star bomb. So, like, yeah, you tr this really is only your face cards. You, yeah, you only feel this if you are back-to-back uh, -back MPing and you're using face cards. If you don't use face cards with her, you're not going to notice the difference. Uh, she can't do single tar for farming. She only for party wide. She only pro provides attack buff. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is a C. This is a mm. Yeah, I I can't put them lower because this is very good. Uh, like it scales well with any card buffs you give. Um, pretty much no, like no first skill. Or if the first skill was worse, they would be in D. 
Uh, 14 more. Uh, Lung Yu. Low basic attack, higher base HP. MP charge at 0.79%. Good, but it does not work well with these arts cards. These arts cards suffer because of it. Uh, extra attack suffers. Quick cards are good, but they're not going to regen that much uh, MP either. These are both 20 card buffs. I don't know why the fuck th like this is the same as Neza. Uh, um, st second skill, star weight, 600% debuff immunity three times, three turns, buff and removal resistance three times, three turns. As a solo unit, this is like really, really helpful and will save your ass a lot. Two times, uh, five turn guts, one HP, 30 battery, uh, 15 stars per turn for five turns. Um, NP, uh, debuff on attack. You put, uh, yeah, puts, uh, defense down when normal attacking. Uh, every time you MP, if you can get the loop, you will have this up a hundred percent. Um, if you crit, you remove their, you remove buffs. And this isn't like remove one enemy buff. This is buff. Yeah, it's not remove one enemy buff. It's if you crit, you remove all their buffs. And if they normal attack you, crit down for them. 30 attack buff. And when she gets attacked, the entire party heals 2,000. So this is a 6k heal. They are afraid to buff this servant. They are definitely afraid to buff this servant. Um, yeah, it's like first skill or MP needs to get buffed. But like if the them buffing the MP actually is a little scary. If she can get a dodge or involve, I would be very happy. Like, yeah, like buff this skill. If they're not gonna buff this, make it a turn wide dodge. And then I don't th I don't think a lot of people will be shit talking the servant afterwards. Her her main weakness is that she doesn't have hard survivability besides the guts. And she if the guts procs, she doesn't have a way to really heal back. Yeah. So I would want her to get a dodge or something so that she actually has a chance to heal back like 6,000 from her MP and just not die from it. Because if the gut, like if she's at, if she's in between guts, uh, she's going to die, proc the guts, heal 2,000, and that's it. And that also uh, happens on the turn, the first guts procs. Uh, unless she has a taunt, she's not going to get any more healing from that. And that is, you're putting a taunt on this character. Uh, necessary buffs to make my mouse and plus plus. Um, your mouse and she's MP2. Is she like max skilled? Uh, what level uh, did you foe her? Like, give give me a little more details. Like, cause I'm still I'm still really reading chat while I do this. By the way, like I don't mind taking away from the uh, tier list for this. Uh, yeah, honestly, one buff and getting like some like really good survivability. Uh, I could put you higher. But right right now you're functional, but not great. You like. One buff of you getting hard survivability and you go to A. Alright, next, Bradamonte.
Oh. 90 and B yeah, no, 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 no. I, I thought you, I thought you were higher, uh, with your medicine than that. Um, quick fixes, try to max out skill one, like lower it. Um, yeah, one, one second while I, uh, just double check this. Lee Melson is right here. Uh, level seven, eighty percent. Uh, do you have mana loading maxed out? Yeah, no. You need uh, you need this skill maxed out. Okay, yeah. Then don't worry about mana loading. Max this skill out. Max this skill out, and then it's possible. Um, because then, uh, 80, like you start in first ascension, 80 plus 30, uh, but you don't really level a skill for the battery. It's the cooldown or you don't level it for the battery in turn one. Uh, you level it for the battery in turn three. Uh, cause then, uh, turn two, you're just popping, uh, both bitch batteries and then turn three, you pop this skill and then Oberon's and then UMP. Uh, if you're still not able to kill after that, uh, then I would level, uh, I would level Malison up to a hundred, and then if you still can't do it, uh, I I don't know. After that point, level the CE. Uh, okay, no, yeah, no, you need bitch. Okay, never mind. Uh, ignore what I said then. That this is only for bitch. All right. Yeah, no, if, if you don't have bitch, then I wouldn't worry about trying to uh, try to six slot the 90 plus plus. Like, I don't, I don't know people, like their accounts. So, like, if you can't, like, yeah, it's like why I do the tier list the way it is. Like, I go in with the assumption that you have what you need to make your characters work because they're your characters. Uh, but, yeah. Rodamonte, 10.8k attack on the lower side, but not concerning amount. Well, this is 700 away from uh, the midpoint. So a little concerning, but not groundbreaking concerning. Uh, HP very high at 5.6k. Uh, MP charge at 0.7, which could be higher, but not the biggest deal. But her face card refund on her arts card is horrendous. Uh, I believe she got buffed and has MP gain and an arts buff. So they're not as bad as they look on paper. But on paper, these don't look good. They look worse than some of the older uh, year one Lancers. Like at, the, at least they have the arts card. Like even if they had only had one, if they crit on it, it would like do a lot. This is, these are just weak. First skill, 30% arts and quick. That's it on a five turn. Second skill, guts, 3k and 30% defense on a six turn. For, uh, third skill got buffed. Uh, targetable, 30 battery. You use it on herself. Uh, cleanse, earth attribute, uh, power mod, and MP gen. Yeah, th this is exactly what she needed to be, uh, become a farmer. Uh, and definitely makes her face like this is a power mod and it makes her face cards better uh she doesn't have crit damage but she can get it from the scotties and then she's a quick servant she makes the stars 10 to max this out skill reloading does it really matter not really but it's better to have it and not need it you know uh this is anti rider really funny because uh Brito Mart does uh does anti rider and hit her kit? Is this is this a Stolfo? This is probably a Stolfo. Stolfo is probably dick, like wearing her clothes, and she had to kick her out of him out of the room. 
Yeah, no, he was looking for his underwear in Britta March room. Don't ask him why he thought his underwear was there. Uh, MP has already been buffed. Five hit AOE quick. Crit damage ramp up. 60% chance to stun. Reduced crit attack chance. And MP's scaling base 20 up to 60. <clears throat> Yeah, no. Um, uh, pending, if you can wait until after the tier list, I can like act like fully focus on like helping you get a team like ready to do shit. Like, I'll answer like questions, but like a general, a general <laughs> question like that, I don't have that kind of time. I like I want to get this done so I can start smoking because I like I have to be sober while I do this. Uh, otherwise, the video turns from like four hours to maybe eight, and I don't want to talk that long. Okay, uh, Bradamante with all her buffs, because this she does out damage Brita Mart. Uh, this doesn't count SE for either of them, and it, or for her, and it doesn't count power mods for either of them. Um. But Rito Mart can loop, yeah, loop against neutral while Brito Mart or Bradamante has refund issues. Yeah. This comes down to it being um, five hit MP versus six hit because both of them have 30 quick, 30 gain, 30 battery. Um, it like it really does just come down to like base stats and thing like pretty much things you can't change um but they are pretty much swappable so Bradamante goes to a plus and we're gonna go right into talking about uh Brita Mart since they are pretty much they're very much the same character like very little differences um so Brita Mart her base attack is a thousand higher her HP is like more than a thousand lower, but it doesn't matter that much. MP charge 0.02% higher. So again, nothing to really care that much about. Uh, instead of double quick, she has double buster, which works way better with ruler Scotty. Um, yeah, like I kind of don't want this like the difference between them literally being their deck but it actually might be it actually might just be the fact that one has a different deck and that works better for damage um yeah better face cards uh and just crit focused invul to attacks three turns mp gen 30 percent crit attack chance resistance 10 stars 10 stars per turn, give off immunity for three turns, not, I think uh, Bramante was times. Does she even have this? No, she doesn't She doesn't have debuff immunity. I'm thinking about a different character. Um, third skill, car buffs with a battery on it. Magic resist B. You're gonna, you're gonna need this and this, same thing. Uh, anti-Avengers funny because of uh, OC2 um, MP 6 hit AOE quick power mod against riding super affecting super effective against riders uh like these two in general are pretty swappable. It's just like like Brito Mart inches it out by just a little bit, and that she's uh has just like straight better refund. Like it's at like even here, uh double double ruler Scotty Oberon, it says loop class advantage and positive classes, meaning uh archers. 
uh, casters and writers. While this is just saying loops against neutral, which is Lancers, again, these two, but like literally every, pretty much every other type of class in the game, uh, Brito Mart will just loop easier. Uh, Brito Mart, like again, also is crit focused. She's, yeah, she's crit focused. She loops better. She doesn't have the anti earth, but she does have a power mod that of anti writing. By the way, these, these are two different uh, things. The passive or the power mod is for characters that have like the writing uh, passive that gives you like a little bit of quick. There aren't that many archers that have anti writing, but it does give her a power mod against a lot of other characters. Um, most sabers have writing, so just don't bring her to fight sabers. But her fighting neutral against like literally any other class. Like, uh, hang on. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, seventy-two. She has a power mod against seventy-two servants that you'd actually bring her to fight. Or seventy. Being realistic, seventy. Um. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Bradamante just doesn't have. She like she's only good for looping, and even she's better at looping. Uh, but not like big enough to matter. Like you, technically, you can swap these two around, but she has double Buster, double quick. Like her Buster card just fucking slap the shit out of everything. Uh, and Bradamante would just have issues with that. Is what it is. All right. Uh, welfare, low star, melt. And after melt, I'll bring up Percival. Is it's it's kind of that same issue. All right. Uh, base attack nine point two k, good number. MP charge healthy at point seven six. Uh, deck. These arts cards, not great, but Melt specifically has a very strong chance of critting on her arts cards when she needs to. Um, and just flexible and how she functions in farming. Her arts card is really, really special. And then it's a five turn, like, even though it's 20%, it is a five turn duration on a four turn cooldown. So this is probably one of the easiest to double stack. Uh, buffs in an arts team that you can possibly imagine and if you have skill reloading and you use her in a Tomo comp you can pop the skill back to back which is really crazy yeah um, I don't you. I don't think you can triple stack this outside of like some really wacky card um, team comps and i don't think those comps are worth worth it just for this but it is something there aren't many skills in the game that have a higher uptime than they do um cooldown like i can't even say downtime there is no downtime with this second skill invul for a turn buff removal resistance 100 percent and Changes the field to water side. So any servants that have to do water side buff shit, uh, Melt guarantees puts it on. So Nemo, if he needs it, like that's part of your setup. It's uh, you're fighting casters and archers. Hey, Melt can really make Nemo pop the fuck off, especially if that like the chunky caster is the final boss. Like if it's a three three one, and the threes are archers. The final one's a caster. So basically the 90 plus plus for this lotto, if they actually wanted to make us suffer. Because technically you can solo core uh, 
the round three ninety plus plus technically, but a hundred million or not hundred million, one million uh HP is still a huge hurdle. Third skill is what make like technically I've used her in farming recently too. So there is if you're fighting doing normal three three three, there's a good chance you don't even need this. MP1, yes, you'll need this far more than higher copies. Um, but this is a 60% battery based on how much charge her allies have. So it's actually not the worst thing to have this like not be maxed out because it means that it limits how much MP you can drain from your allies. Like say they have a 30 battery and they're just like slightly under um yeah say uh or say their battery skill isn't maxed out but melts is uh and they were at 100% melt drains and then you battery back up they're not able to mp uh but the inverse where this skill isn't maxed out but their servant is their battery is maxed out they will be able to MP. You cannot choose how much melt drains. She just drains the highest amount she can. Uh, if the enemy does not, if your allies do not have enough charge, she just doesn't get that battery. She will drain them to zero and whatever she can get, she'll take. Star wait for that turn and a 50% crit buff. Uh, Melt's farming numbers look as skewed as they do because of this 50 uh, hard buff. Like in just double Castoria, she jumps from 76 to 132, uh, which is 20,000 off, just straight up doubling the damage. And then here it is not exactly times three damage, but again, it's not that far off times three damage. This is uh, 230,000. Uh, triple in the damage here would be 27, 270,000. Uh, so around 2.5 damage, uh, is what like the 50 attack buff and uh, Oberon buffing would give you. Passive 17.5% magic resist, riding C, uh, independent action EX for extra crit damage. Uh, debuff resistance 20%, so her total is 37.5% debuff resistance. High Servant, we don't have anything that does something for this right now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they did something about this passive in the future, because we... Pr for all I know, this could be Violet. Violet might have something to do with uh, High Servant, or they'll buff it for Servants. Uh, but High Servant literally just means it is an amalgamation of multiple deities. That That is what High Servant means in FGO. Because all of the servants that have this, I believe, are all composite servants. Yeah. This is like three goddesses. All of the um, Soccer 5. Domin is already known to be multiple uh, things crammed into him or he absorbed it. Uh, Shufu, uh, I think th this is, um, I think that merging with space Shufu and something else, I think because of the summer, I'm not entirely sure. Kazura drop is Kazura drop and it's not gods, it's fairies. Um, eat. I need to double check why Shufu has high servant. Because it's both, it's not even just one, it's both of them have this. Uh, meta loading for looping ease, skill reload, reloading for some funny shit. And yeah, MP removes all enemies' evasion buffs while you're on water side. So. Yeah, you don't have to worry about dodges as long as it's in her normal farming, uh, which enemies don't have dodges. You don't leave them enough time to do that. But Pierce's defense always. 
and star bomb at the end of the MP, which is pretty nice for art servants. They don't make stars that often. And like she has very, very consistent loop numbers, even though she's only a three hit. Because going back to that, most three hit arts MP servants also have gains that are like 0.6 to 0.5. They're usually not that good. It's part of the reason why her looping is as good as it is. She has like decent gains. Like Muramasa, like he, uh, like he is meant for use with double Castoria. Like his entire gameplay loop screams, I need double Castoria to do my most damage. Uh, Melt goes hmm. A for right now, and let's go to Percival, and then I'll decide then. Okay, so first of all, lower base gain at 0.64%, uh, lower base attack too, but he is so fucking consistent. And for looping, he only needs one skill level. You literally don't care about anything else for him. Uh, yep, 0.64. His face art gains aren't great at all. Most of his gains come from A, his loop, B, him getting hit, or C, just, like, doing arch chains and, like, you're not worried about the crits. Two Buster cards, though, so he gets more damage. His chains look pretty nice. Uh, first skill, 30% arts up, 20 battery, and 20 MP damage for the party. I forgot that this was party-wide. So, multi-core for him. Second skill, taunts for three turn, and he increases his MP generate when he gets hit by 50%. So at base, he gets 4% every time he gets hit. With that skill, he gets six. He gets hit by a five hit attack. And instead of getting 20 MP gain back, he gets 30. Third skill, targeted uh, invul. For one turn and a 2k heal. So he can pop this on himself and he gets saved like free battery. Magic resist 18.5% and riding C plus 7%. Mana loading again, just to make his looping easier and you have more options. Uh, you do not need this. If you want it, go for it, but you do not need this skill. Or hit AoE, AoE Arts, which is why his looping is comparable to Melt. Uh, he has lower gains, but uh, like he is just consistent. Like this is four hit Arts. They are they tend to be more consistent across uh, looping in general. Uh, heals the ally with the lowest HP by three thousand. Uh, and this is based on like percentages. So if you have, so like King Protea, um, if she is like, yeah, Pr King Protea, pretty much if you try to use this with her on the field, if she took a good chunk of damage, more likely than not, she's always going to get healed by this versus someone that uh, is missing like, exactly 3000 hp but they only have like 12000 we're at 9000 uh 75% of their max hp even though healing even though they haven't uh sorry even though one heal will get them to full this would just prior prioritize like percentage wise so if that uh other ally gets hit a lot lower it will get healed, but King Protea, when her HP is as big as it is, is always going to get priority for effects like this that target 
uh, based off a percentage, not max HP, like not by HP loss. Uh, this is weak ish scaling. It's a good starting number, but it scales kind of low. So, uh, I'm not going to go to the lab for this one because I have used these two both consistently, uh, recently, or I've used both very recently and also around the same level of power. They tend to be functioning the same, but melt is better in 90 plus. Yeah. Like they, they tend to do like about the same, uh, Percival just kind of has like an issue where he is expected to be looping 100% or above 100% and tends to do it more than Melt does. Uh, but Melt has a huge 60% battery with an attack buff that you kind of can't really get around. Um... I have started to come around though that melt functionally works a little better than first of all. Yeah, before I I did think Percival was better and I still do just um not where it matters. Like he's better in 333 farming and at this current part point in JP being good at 3 3 farming isn't, that's nothing really special. Like, you can do 3 3 3, three, three, three farming isn't hard to do at all. It's not hard for quick. And we're seeing, we saw four star quick units loop 100% in 3 3 3 farming. Like, an art servant just being good at 3 3 3 farming isn't, like, it's not something that, I need to prioritize over other aspects. So, um, if we were taking into considerability though, availability, Percival would go up because you're more likely to have a higher copy of Percival than you are Melt. And I think in one of the earlier tier lists, I might've made that point, but this is talking about MP1. Um, I do talk about availability, but usually that doesn't matter when we're talking mp1 because if you have the servant you have them it doesn't matter if you have a higher copy all right uh i'm gonna take a bathroom break and then finish this up uh because we have eight more servants and i know i can sit down and get the rest done and then i can smoke all right so let's uh get the these last eight servants done or wait is it eight no seven Seven. Yeah, I'm going to be a lot done a lot sooner than I thought. All right. Ryoma, this is uh, this is someone else I have to bring to the lab because I'm not kind of don't trust that he actually can't do double Oberon or double Castoria Oberon when he has a 50 battery. Um, so take. I haven't used him at this level in a very long time. Um, and I did not enjoy trying to make him black girl loop. So yeah, give me a sec on this chat. I'm going to run through this and then I'm going to go to the lab. Uh, 10.7 base attack. Uh, that might be part of the issue. Wait, is it MP3 hits? Uh, that's part of the, oh yeah ba low hits and low base gain okay oh that's that's that would that do it I'll definitely do it all right uh yeah base stack low base HP high base gain very low like it makes sense with these arts cards but not with his MP hit count he should have had four hits not three. Um, first skill, party wide, uh, arts buff 
party-wide crit buff 30%, and overcharge for the party one time three turns. Second skill, 50% battery, 100% uh, buff removal of resistance for three turns, and 100 and guaranteed debuff immunity for three turns. So good in, good in challenge quests. You are not using him for farming. But I'm I'm pretty sure everyone already knew that though. That have like actually seen his kit. Uh 30% arts up, 30% buster up, and 10 stars per turn. Kind of, like if it wasn't for this second skill, he kind of I'm gonna be real, he kind of doesn't look that much like a five star. Because like you see skills like this on four stars. This 50 battery is, like, really good for CQs. 15% uh, debuff resistance, riding EX, 12% quick up. Uh, Shapeshift Orochi, 10% crit, crit attack chance resistance up by 10%, and 10 crit damage, 10% crit damage. Uh, mana loading for ease of use. Skill re reloading for CQs because you're probably using Tomo and she'll just love having lower cooldowns to start with. Uh, NP AoE three hits. This is probably the kicker for stopping them from being able to loop. 50% defense for one turn. This is a lot like that. Might like any other combination of defense buffs, uh, more defense up. Or damage cut, and he's just not going to take damage that turn. Uh, and decent MP damage ramp up because it's last three turns, activates first. So at minimum, you get 60% MP damage, which is a lot. Funny that he has MP gain here, but not in the skills because he would be better if he had MP gain in the skills. I'm like, fuck it, buff this, yeah, no, buff this skill and give party-wide MP gain, and then you can call it a day with him. I'm like 90% sure that's all he needs. Uh, Alright, so on here, damage doesn't look great, but that's because he's also being forced to use Ocean Flyer. I'm just double going to double check whether he can use uh, Black Rail and be back. So, I am, like, firmly of... The belief that this is probably the biggest slander like I have seen in this game. This makes Ryoma look so much worse than he actually is by the fact that it doesn't show him with Black Rail. Because I just did the testing. I know for a fact he can do Black Rail. He has so much goddamn charge. It's actually really stupid. And he could, like, your Castorias can consistently be popping their MPs. They're, so, again, I'm probably going to start making my own spreadsheet for this shit because this this was egregious. Uh, now, this damage might look low, but that's because he's not using Black Rail. I wanted to make sure that it was that this was supposed to be an overkill problem, and I think it is. I think that this is just too inconsistent and like real quick. Like I'm not doing this. Uh, I don't really do these tests on stream. Um, but cast stories don't have uh, appends. If they did have appends, this would work even better. And this is still him without um, bows. Even still, even still, this is fucking slander. Jordan, don't, I don't mean to be shit talking to you, but like you actually just made, you kind of do make like a five star look way worse. Um, I really would want, like, if you were still updating this, I would definitely want to talk to you about it, but. It's just out of date. And, like, if this was a thing from the beginning, this is... That is a lot of slander. 
Uh, Ryoma. Uh, oh, damn. I like. I don't even know what was going on myself then. You are at least here because you do not. You might not loop a hundred percent, but you have so much charge you don't need to. If we're if we're doing apples to apples for teams, like you have so much charge. And again, that was MP1 I was testing. I can promise you it was MP1. Um yeah, you are firmly an A plus. Um, I don't think you go to EX though. Just uh just because Retra. And since I'm already doing this far out of order, um, we'll do Retra. And then we'll wrap back around and finish with uh, Don Quixote and Bima. And then uh, Dobrynia. So, Ritra. Yeah, no, like this, that actually um, really annoys me. So, uh, I'm, uh, oof. All right, Ritra. Base attack, 12.3k, really high, good number, HP, lower to compensate. MP charge, 0.54%, so 0 0.08 higher than uh, Ryoma. Uh, but Vitra does not have nearly as big of a battery. Uh, four hit on quick, three hit on arts, one buster card. Um... So yeah, the comparison is like Ryoma has would have better carding, but he does not have any crit damage. Uh to make use of this, like you are going to have to give it to him. Uh Vitra, she can make the stars for herself. And she is supposed to be critting. Uh three charm arts up 30% and a 500 percent star weight to her arts card. Uh so even if she doesn't loop a hundred percent, her if she crits on her arts card, it's going to like get her back up where she needs. Second skill party mod, uh, power mod against uh, divinity for the entire party of thirty percent and a thirty battery. Third skill guts one time five turns ups the MP damage uh, or gauge ten percent every turn and twenty percent. Uh, MP damage for the for the party, but this only happens once. Uh, passives debuff resistance twenty percent, dragon kind a, uh, ten percent buster and one hundred and eighty damage cut. MP three hit AOE arts reduce credit attack chance and. Arts res down, base 10, ramps up. Um, I am probably changing where I planned on putting these characters. Yeah, so... Her power mod against Divine... Um, that would be nice, but the thing is, it's in the same spot as MP damage, and if we're talking just looping, it makes way more sense. Okay, so I truly thought Retra would definitely take it, but she just doesn't like the biggest difference is base attack a hundred percent the biggest difference is going to be base attack and overkill but the thing is Ryoma kind of has so much charge it kind of just doesn't matter um yeah so Retra keeping it like that Um, I'm not going to put one of these four into EX mostly because all four of them are pretty swappable. It's just these two are going to be better 
or just have better charge situations than these two. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Well, that's all I can say. Oof. I, I like this is like this is showing my bias chat. I like Retro's design. I like it a lot. But like I I cannot like just put her higher than Ryoma because no. There there is definitely some clunk in this kit. Well, Ryoma, like, he doesn't have that clunk. It's his his weakness is his AoE, uh, his MP being three hit. But if you're giving him something to actually up his damage, it's not an issue. All right. Uh, five more. All right. Canis. Base attack, very high for a four star, almost hidden 10k, HP, lower. Their gender is Canis, and that, that's where I'm leaving it for this one. MP charge, healthy at 0.86%, but they're a buster unit, so it's for these cards, uh, and it just makes their game better. And we got golden Canis. First skill. Two turns of 40% attack buff on a five turn cooldown. This can come back pretty quickly if you were buster farming, but wait. Uh... Okay, so this is another character that you can actually do. Um, I have to go to the lab for Canis because this is a character that, again, can start from 60 and might be able to do some nasty stuff farming. Hmm. It's really unfortunate that this is in three turns. Because, like, in my head, I'm thinking, like, what numbers uh, Canis could actually hit. And the fact that this... Uh, yeah. All right. Um, we're not, we're not going to see the crazy stuff we saw with uh, Lortoria. That's just not happening based on, like... This, yeah, no. His own normal attack, unfortunate. Um, but yeah, forty percent attack for two turns, but decent uptime. Uh, on attack buff. Uh, so every time a normal attack, uh, they get an attack buff, but only for their normal attacks. So it would be a crit brave chain that you'd see the most benefit out of this. And it's enough that your extra attack actually would get the benefit because an extra attack is considered a normal attack. A uh, normal attack just means like you you're not MP. And when you normal attack and when you normal attack, uh you put attack down. 15 stars per turn and 20 battery. Yeah, that was a needed buff. That was a very needed buff. Uh, third skill, 3k uh, damage cut for three attacks, three turns. This is massive damage cut. Like, not face tank MP damage cut, but still really big damage cut. If you get other defense buffs, like, Canis just doesn't take damage. Uh, guts, one time, three turns. Decent uptime. Yeah. Fast skills, 15% debuff resistance. Man's Enhancement EX, 12% buster up, and arts up. Mana loading for farming, question mark. I'm going to see how much that looks. Uh, and this is going to be required. So you need both of these. MP, AoE buster, ramp up crit damage of 50% for three turns. Activ um, doesn't matter whether it activate first or not. Uh, but for just laying down the buster cards, oh boy, you are just spamming bu buster crits. Uh, MP damage ramp up, base 20, uh, and scales with OC up to 30. 
So this is a lot weaker than what Rioma's was. All right, so let me just quickly run through and see what kind of damage we're working with. Uh, and then I'll go back, get back to you on placing Kano. All right, so this is showing uh, that even if Kano's could do double Vich, it wouldn't have been helping that much. Uh, Kano's just does not have enough attack buffs to double stack the skill one only being two turns real pain in the ass especially because in non-double vich there's no conceivable way canis is uh going to be able to pop this on skill two and get the cooldown back on skill on turn three that just can't happen you need uh actually No, not possible. You would need it. You have to pop on turn one. Yeah, pop it down for four turns. Reduce, but yeah, no. Um, Canis just needs far more buffs. The fact that they can do farming at all is surprising. Like, and not, and you're not starting with K scope. Um, is like that's that's kind of all this buff really did. It made it so uh Canis can start from 50 and not need K scope. Uh previously, I don't even think they were able to do this. Uh you would have had to save skill one, like you couldn't pop this on turn one, but this is pretty much all, like this amps you up for like later turns like turn three you but um basically would just double stack this and mp buster buster and just like make your buster cards uh just oh no 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 oh that actually works out so well the your extra attack will get 120 percent attack from this uh assuming you do not uh, face card like you're only MPing like the first few waves uh, and then turn three you get MP buster buster and then extra attack that's when you'll see like a lot from this but that is again super super niche I think it's fair to put them here just because of that reason. Uh, one second. That's a, no, your battery's on that seven turn, not the five. Yeah, Neza almost could have gotten away with this and they would have had like better damage. Yeah. Unfortunate. All right. So C tier, if there was a C plus, I would definitely give it to Canis. Like a hundred percent. If there was a, C, if I made C plus, Canis would go there, because that like roided out by bitches Buster crits, like Canis would, like that is a lot of attack up for that uh, final Buster crit. That's eighty percent attack, plus another forty. Yeah. The, Anus can get some pretty big spikes, but unfortunately, they are held back. Okay. All right, Grand Roma up next. And after this, three more. Base attack, 12.2k. Good starting point. HP good too. Uh it's not super high, but this is normal for five stars. MP charge 0.59%, but he's a buster unit. Uh so it just makes his arts cards like feel better. Or no, they could they could be feeling better. 
Uh, but Mighty Chains and them, you actually fighting on these, they should feel pretty good. First uh, deck, good. Nothing like outstanding, by the way. It's it's good, generically good. First skill, twenty percent attack up. Uh, party crit damage up twenty percent. Crit damage of Roman allies up thirty percent, and you inflict the Roman trait uh, for all enemies for five turns. Um, how the fuck do you have Ishar's charisma with? these extra effects and Ishar hasn't gotten buffed. Like this is how the skill released. One sec. Like could I would love for someone to explain to me how this makes sense. Uh, how, how does this make sense? Like, I know this is specific, but he makes his allies Roman. You cannot say that this is, like, this is not a reach that this should have gotten buffed years ago. You cannot tell me that's not a reach. Because uh, Romulus literally has a shard skill, but just factually better. Doesn't, like, even if she had this shit on it, like, yeah, it wouldn't help her. Because she can't make people Roman. But fuck, like, males. She will have male crypt damage by 30%. Like, fuck, it's Ishtar. Males and gender unknown. Or hell, just buff everyone, because it's not like a sex goddess is going to care about gender. It's only... It's not like Rin cares about gender either. Yeah, it's Ishtar and Rin. Make it like everyone gets 50% crit damage. Because Rin does not discriminate on gender. She is based that way. She has her own harem. She is not in the harem. Second skill. Two hits of invul, two attacks, three turns, 30 battery, and 10 stars. This skill, a little weak. Could use a buff, but not the end of the world. Third skill, buster up 30%. Crit star weight, 500%. And on attack buff. When you crit, you give people the Roman debuff. Nine lives, Roma. Slaying the hundred heads. Feels good, man. Passive skills. Uh, A, magic resist. 20% debuff resistance. Independent action, B+. 9% crit damage. And then another 9% buster up. Passives. Uh, definitely mana loading. Do you, is, mm, Yeah, you're, you are always able to double pop this, so it's not a huge thing about skill cooldown. Um, you don't want to pop this again. You don't want to pop this early, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, if this is on a five turn, I'd be having a different conversation and trying to see, like, if uh, if he... No, he can't do Black Row, I don't think. But he can do... He can do double over on instead, but it's, like, not a huge thing. It doesn't help his damage by that much. Uh, Alright, MP. Damaged all enemies. Uh, extra damage against Roman allies. Uh, SE, based off uh, whether he's fighting Roman enemies. Uh, this caps out at a uh at two hundred percent, but it's just hard to ramp that up, and it's not gonna happen in farming. This is like a very much CQ focus SE. Um, he puts Roman trait on all enemies, and by this calcs uh based on the 
based on the enemy, not in total. So that's the main reason it's hard to ramp this up. You need a lot of crits. And against AoE, it's probably you're not going to be able to have a max SE on multiple enemies. You have to focus on one. He put uh he also gives the party the Roman trait. Uh so they can take advantage of this part. But that's pretty much the only reason uh your allies need the Roman bet trait. There is also a craft essence that lets him put on the Roman trait. So that is uh most people use it with Draco. Uh but he is able to use it and he can gen he can ramp up his super effective even faster as and if he doesn't crit. Also, his MP is a charisma, but there's a very weak base amount at 10%. Uh, wish it was higher, but I don't... He already has a charisma, so I don't think they were going to give him an actual charisma as just the OC for his uh, MP. Uh, you going to A. Very nice crit focus, uh, but your SE takes a lot to ramp up, uh, and so your farming is lower than it could be, but your CQ utility, or not even CQ, just like Chungus boss fight, you work better. But Arash Khan has SE and just functionally is less likely to die and is more likely to keep the rest of your party alive. Um, Roma has very, very high highs, like insanely high highs. But if he, if the enemy gets cleansed, you're kind of just shit out of luck. Yeah, no, that's the other thing. If you're fighting someone that's debuff immune, like, he is actually shit out of luck. And not only does he not... Yeah, he... He can't... Um, mm. Yeah, let me just break this down. Uh, here, Roman... Oh, okay. No, no, no. Debuff. Um. Yeah, I don't want to talk out my ass whether or not this can be cleansed or not. I would assume this could be cleansed because they're specifically calling this a debuff. And I believe it would have to fight magic resist as well. Um, yeah, like that is the only reason he's at A because I, and I might be wrong about that, whether or not like it can be cleansed or not. But the fact of the matter is, if he can't land this, his, his damage falls off a cliff. Like he needs to be able to make his SE to let him do good damage. All right, three more. Don Quixote. Unfortunately, this is not Do Flamingo Don Quixote, so we're we're not seeing the one of the most savage anime characters in a while. We have this goofball and his uh, secretary that both wants him to be a hero and like keep him alive the the shadow the shadow leader um yeah so don quixote quixote uh sancho panza is uh the horse and then another character from the story is merged into the horse um base attack it is lower hp uh, it's not super low for a four star, but it's not great either. 
Uh, MP charge 0.71%. This is Karna's deck with better hit counts. Yes. This is Karna's deck with better hit counts and gain. Uh, so, good. First skill, 20% car, uh, car buffs for Quick and Buster. Not great. Uh, and a one-time three-turn guts at 2k, up for three turns, down for three. Yeah, no, this skill could definitely use a buff. I, I, I don't, I don't like these being 20% unless it's party wide. Second skill, 20% attack, uh, 10 gauge per turn, and 10 stars per turn. He recently got this skill buffed. Uh, I forget when. Uh. But they got rid of his demerit, where before he used to drain his HP to zero. And you needed to have your gauge higher than 30 to do this. Now they got rid of the draining it to zero. Uh, they gave him 30% uh, 30 power mod against super large enemies. And 30 stars and the battery is staying the same at an AoE 30 except for himself. So solid for multi-core. Just not just not great for multi-core. Um he more likely than not would be uh the turn What's up Coco back from a test. Nice. Um hmm. yeah, no, he, he functions pretty well in multi-core. Because your support and your other DPS are gonna be able to MP easier. 10% debuff resist for magic resist. Uh, very small quick buff from riding E. Uh, and 20% insta-kill resistance because of uh, Sancho, the traveling attendant. Uh, mana loading just to help him. Uh, this not going to matter that much because he's quick. And yeah. So MP. Damage to one enemy. 150% against giant enemies, par uh, party-wide charisma, and party-wide crit damage. Yeah, no, for multi-core, this guy is good. I would love if this was AoE. If this was AoE, I would think he was, he's so much better. Yeah, e if either one of these effects were AoE, he would be a lot better. <sighs> All right, so giant enemies, not not that many. Super large, not that many, but you can see here King Protea is on this list for both of them. So he kind of like can decimate King Prote like really, really well because he has uh, SE stacking with uh, a power mod. Yeah, no, that, it, that can output really good damage for a Lancer and King Prote is not gonna be able to do much against it. Um, and it looks like if something is giant, it's also super large, but not, it doesn't go both ways. Yeah, it, it does not go both ways. Uh, luckily there are a bunch of berserkers here for giant that he can take advantage of. Um, but they really did narrow it. But eh, this is this is really good super um multi core utility. Power mod against giants, yeah, no, that honestly is helpful. Um, and with his bond seat, like again. If they max, if they made that a passive, like that would be very, very nice for multi core. Yeah. 
Nope, you do not go in D. Yeah, no, with your with your buff, you look a lot better. I can put you at uh, B. And there is, yeah, no, you are better than Medusa. I firmly believe you're better than Medusa. I would use Don Quixote, uh, single target, archer boss over Medusa. Pretty handily. Uh, all right. And then he's like also good at multi core too. So there is that. All right, two more Fima and Dobrynya. All right, Bima. Guy turns it up. Fucking, uh, I forget what it's called. Saint Seiya. Man turns into Saint Seiya and does fucking double damage based off OC. Or no, it's not a double damage, but he does get uh, extra hits. Uh, I firmly said if he, uh, Yeah, if he, like, this affects star gen, and that's it. If he was able to qu uh, switch his MP quick, uh, GG. He, he would be disgusting if he, like, if he could swap to quick. Because Arash and Cheng Gong, they don't get extra, uh, their extra hits are based on if the enemy is still alive. Um, this is always going to make hits. Uh, get the extra hits as long as you're OC2. Have to be higher than OC2. So someone like Shield Array that can give o uh, OC and be his lawful good, he's an actual support and helps him a lot. But let's get back to it. Uh, base attack, nice and high at 12.3k. HP is also decently high at 14k. Uh, MP charge 0.72 again, but this this one is way less surprising that his deck look looks exactly like Karna's. But once again, shits on uh, Karna's hit counts like across the board. Um, again. Oh, same gains. The fuck? They literally just took Karna's deck and made it better. And then called it a different character. That's a, that's a little fucked up. Um, yeah, but anything Karna, anything I said about Karna's uh base gains, Bima's are just better. They are just, they cannot possibly be worse. Uh, first skill guts one time three turns. 3k, uh, 30 battery, and a full cleanse. Uh, yeah, nope, that's good. Cleanse when the guts prop procs also good, but like this is this is solid. This is all survivability. Second skill, 30% buster up, 30% crit damage, and 15 stars. Third skill, quick and buster magic. 30% attack for three turns. Uh, when he uses his quick cards, he gets crit damage up 10% for three turns. Activates first. If he uses a buster card, he gets five stars. So this is revert like this is a different spin on the Dio Scurry buffs. And again, I don't know why Dio Scurry doesn't have some some kind of actual buff on their skills. Because they need it. Yeah, actually, because when I when I talked about Dio Scurry like a couple weeks ago, I forgot. Like I think I mentioned this that on skills like this, there usually is another effect too. I'm pretty sure I said Dio Scurry knew this. Yeah, no, Dio Scurry just had too many issues that like they functioned, but like it wasn't at the standard it should have been like this was a fix this should have another effect on it uh if dio scurry gets buffed again and it's their first skill i'm not going to be surprised 
especially if it's in the next year. Um, but yeah, this is solid skill. Um, it, it is telling you to mix and match, but I'm sure people would have wanted the crit damage to come, uh, from uh, the crit damage to come from the Buster cards, uh, because you're much more likely to be hitting Buster cards and also the MP count. So on MP activation, you do Gen five stars automatically. Magic resist C, fifteen percent debuff resistance, complete poison immunity. Uh, you're gonna want mana loading, skill reloading. Anti Berserker, really fucking nice. Uh, yeah, like Bima kind of wants everything, but he he can make do with uh the Sita, and he doesn't need. No, 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 no. He actually does. He does want skill reloading, but just not in the normal way. Um, it is so you can pop this these two on. No, this is the normal way. Uh, it's so you can pop these two skills on turn two, and then you get you can start getting crit damage, or extra crit damage, uh, and another Buster buff early. So MP base animation is five hits, but if you have OC, you have an the MP lasts a little longer, and he'll do another five hits. If this was quick, you would have a, essentially a ten hit quick mp when as long as uh as if you lead with an, a different mp he also removes their buffs again like it's not outside the realm of possibility but it kind of would have been really stupid if bima could swap to quick and had buff removal first before melt now that isn't an issue uh but he removes buffs before damage and he ramps up crit damage at 50% for three turns. The, again, this doesn't matter whether it activates first. It's just nice that it happens. It's not, it's not like they're going to make MPs crit. Because that, that is GG. That is GG for game balances if MPs could crit. Uh, and yeah, these five hits. Uh, they just do more damage as you get more, higher OC. Uh, so what is this? I don't want them to make him AOE though. I want him to stay firmly in single target. Um, this is not going to show it though. Uh, so we are gonna have to go into uh, a place to do to show like how much more damage. Because I don't think it's just straight up double damage. I think there's some nuance to it. Um, Fonzie, extra MP damage, and 20 Star Bomb for when he first drops in. Oh, I really want that to be a pass. That is very nice for Miss Crane shit. That is amazingly good for uh, working Miss Crane into things. All right. Back to the lab. Okay, so this for some people might be a little complicated to understand. Um basically you're gonna have to like divide. Um we're not eh, trying to explain this cleanly, but basically like this is two separate damage instances that takes all the scaling into consideration. Uh, and at MP1, this actually ended up really clean. Like, as you can see here at MP1, um, the damage multiplier is 600%. And then the first stage of overcharge is another 200%. And it lines up pretty cleanly here, 600,000. Um, and this is just like me, uh, double stacking Bima's shit and everything. Um, this isn't practical, but this is just how it ends up. Uh, uh, Valkyries, thanks, bro. Yeah, no problem, Coco. Um, yeah, so it is literally, um, basically, like, you take this number, or you put this number on top in a fraction, and then this number on the bottom, and that's, uh, yeah, so, 
quick example, 200 divided by 600. Third. Um, so times 100%. 33. So it's like uh, you multiply it by 4 over 3rd. Uh, 4 over 3. Um, to get the increase in damage. But that's only for this. Um, so that, like at MP1, this 500%, this extra, the extra hits of damage is going to come very close to like the actual MP. Um, but it's hard to get it like exactly doing like an extra 50% damage. Uh, it's almost never going to be an extra 50%. And again, the scaling is a little weird. So if you don't know how the work, uh, the math works, you might, uh, either, you're, like you're probably not gonna get the calc right on first try if you try to like do this in your head, um, because you're you're like always going to need these multipliers, um. Yeah, like this is fun. Like this is taking the base number. Uh, I don't want to like explain this. Oh, this is like getting extra eidolons in Honkai. How it those extra levels, like three and five, those extra levels affect the modifier of the actual and uh the skill, the ultimate, all of that. That's basically what this is. Um, but it uh, like. It affects things differently. Like, it's always going to be, like, a consistent amount of damage. Like, an extra 20, 000, uh, 200,000 damage is absolutely nothing to scoff at for single target farming. That isn't nothing, but this isn't... This is something you definitely need to be uh, building for. Beam, like, despite looking like a generic... Like, not looking, but... Despite first impressions him being like a generic beat stick, he you have to like really play around him if you want to take full advantage of him. Like he has a very good ceiling. Like a very strong ceiling. Um out of all the single core farmers, he's going to be the best. Uh one sec. Uh, MP damage, yeah, super high base damage, does have SE, um, a third of this, yeah, okay, so, uh, six times 1.33, 65,000, as long as it gets overcharged. Puts him like right under Enki Enkidu's base damage. Um, yeah, some of this just isn't fair comparison because like the first one. Um, oh wait, Bima compared to oh, is it just MP two? Oh right, okay. No, I'm I'm dumb. I'm dumb for how I was trying to explain this. Is it you take this number and you add it? Like, I'm sitting here trying to, like, calc, like, the perfect amount of damage. It's like, th this is how it works in the formula. You take this, and you add it. Because that's how my calculator is showing it. Um, and here, that Bima's MP, like, almost right on the money. Like, him getting MP2 is a 200% uh, damage increase to the modifier. That's, li that's literally what this is showing. Like this, uh, all this extra decimals is because of rounding. Um, yeah. So his MP one is a, is MP two. Uh, as long as you get one level of overcharge, and the higher you get of overcharge, the closer an MP one looks like an MP five for damage. Yeah. So that is, and his like. 
I'm like I'm only talking about the extra damage part of his MP. I'm not even talking about how nasty his crit damage is. The fact that he buff removes every time he MPs. Like he has insanely high damage that will like that will literally only scale up. His kit's great. Like, sorry if I'm, this sounds like a debate. I'm really so sorry if I made this sound like a debate. Um, but Bima, like, I wanted to make sure this the calc was correct um, for how this actually worked in like in terms of like putting in data. Um, yeah, Bima is firmly in EX. Um, because Tomomo, it, like it has, a, it honestly does have a lot to do with him being good at face guards. Because Tomomo and Bryn are definitely going to struggle in that situation. Yeah, it, anything like Bima is like a single target version of Roma without this SE. For like how strong he is in comparison to his competition. Like, if these two aren't getting SE, you're picking Bima. And even if, like, even if they, they're on niche, you still might pick Bima. If, like, if you need crits. All right. The last Lancer... Or no, no, because I I do plan on going over Melison. Like I'm joking that like I'm putting her in Melison tier. She's still gonna be in Melison tier, but I might as well just go over it. I'm I'm just gonna save her for last. All right, Dobrynia, the newest Lancer on this list, and the first one we got in an actual year on JP. Nine point seven K base attack, good number. HP lower. MP charge, 0.45%. I already said, like, four hit arts. This wasn't bad. And Dobrynia is one of those arts servants that just will just keep looping. Um, She has ridiculously good refunds, and she has ramp up and everything. She is a very well put together arts, uh, single target arts DPS. First skill, 20% arts up for three turns. 30% battery and a 30 star bomb. Very healthy. Second skill, 20% attack, 30% crit damage. Power mod against dragon for 50%. Uh, if she's on water side, 20% attack, 20% crit damage, 20% defense. What the fuck? Third skill, 10 stars per turn, 10 gauge per turn, 1,000 healing, 30% MP gen for three turns. Definitely want mana loading for ease of use. Skill reloading for Tom Mo comps. Uh, this can go down to a four turn. Uh, and if you get more... Uh, cooldown reduction, you might be able to double stack this. Uh, definitely a little scary if you can double stack it. Uh, so, Tomomo MP, and you are looking really good. Uh, anti rider, more crit damage, extra attack. MP, five hit single target arts, damage to one enemy, seals their MP. Reduces Artres down, so this is an Arts buff for herself and the rest of your team. And Power Mod against Earth Attribute. This is not super effective. Super unfortunate. But I will take another Power Mod. I will, yeah, I will take Power Mod over MP damage if it activates first, and it does. Yeah, so she is an arts unit that actually is probably going to be critting a lot. Like, a lot. And she pretty much just suppresses fire. 
She, she's one of those units. If it wasn't for Mellison being Mellison, she would have earned EX immediately. I've used this character, and it is... It is actually really... It, it's gross how easily she can just loop her MP and keep going. It, it's... You have to use her. You, like, you're just gonna have to use her and, like, try her out. It's... There aren't, she doesn't feel like a Lancer, honestly. No other character on this list comes. Wait, oh, because they're not welfare, right? The only other one is Kagetora. That's why I'm like, okay, wait, why is she the only one on here? It's because she is the only uh, gotcha single target arts uh, Lancer. I forgot where I put Kagetora. But even this is just functionally better than Kage Tora. Uh, and is probably the reason why Kage Tora honestly got the buff. Uh, yeah, no, Kage Tora is literally Dobrynia, just worse. Literally just worse. Same gain. But Dobrynia ramps up arts. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. Um, if you have Dobrynia, you're probably going to stop using Kagutora. More likely than not, you're going to stop using Kagutora. Because this, like, Dobrynia is who you've been waiting for to replace uh, Kagutora. All right, once again, um, this list looks really lopsided in the B rank, but, I mean, B is average, so that does make more sense. Um, and now it's time for the obvious one, the only servant in the game that, that gets their own tier. Not e like I wouldn't even put Castoria in her own tier at this point, because so many other characters can kind of do what Castoria does. Um, like four years ago for Castoria, best servant in the game. No, no one can do what she does. Four years later, she's still the best servant in the game, but other servants are able to now do what she used to. No one else used to have special invul. Uh, no one else. Used to have AoE 30 arts or AoE batteries with arts and all what she does. So many other looping supports exist now. Um, Melison is literally the only servant in the game that you can't replace because she does two different things and she does them so fucking well. Um, she is the only, she was the only black rail looping buster farmer for a very 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 long time and even now like the servants that can do buster farming most of them like her most of them can't do it as easily as her her main competition on that that aspect is tiamat and they do not overlap tiamat is for calvary melison is specifically fighting archers to see the best damage So let's go down the list for why Meloco is broken. Base attack, very high. MP charge, 0.65% on three hit arts cards. Again, very good refund for when she's in single target mode. Hit counts across the board, good. Double buster, good. She can do um, might brave chains with... Uh, she can do Buster Brave Chains, and she can do Arch Brave Chains. It's literally depending on what you want. First skill, 40% attack for three turns. Damage cut of 500 for three turns. Max HP 2k, and a 30 battery. Second skill, 5,000% star weight. 10 stars per turn, and 10 stars. So if we were judging Melison based solely on this and comparing her to Dobrynia, 
I think that Dobrynya is a better single target arts lancer than Melison. I think that's very clear that she's just straight up a better single target. But the thing is, Melison can be whatever she wants. And for multi-core, her kit works better because she can just instantly swap MPs and in like and MP on that turn. This is why she's broken. It's because she can do this and swap to this and loses absolutely nothing besides what bu like the buffers. You can get run her with a full arts team and only give arts buffs and she is fully functional and has more to her kit than say Lee Shuen. I would use single target Melison with only two skills over Lee Shuen. Would I use single target Melison over Dobrynya now? No. Dobrynya, I think, functions far better. So this Melison tier is only held up, held up because she can just swap instantly. She also gets an involve for that turn. Uh, and when she's already on Buster, because there are two different looping things here, uh, her her starting in third ascension, you not even taking advantage of the 30% battery. Uh it's weaker than Black Rail, but not by that much. You only squeak out another 30% MP damage off this. And is that worth it? Or is 45% MP damage and 8% buster equal to 80% uh MP damage? And another 400 extra attack that you, there's no conceivable way you can get from anywhere else. No. The answer is no. The answer is no. Magic resist B, 17.5% debuff resistance. 9% uh, arts up for territory creation. She doesn't have an arts car buff anywhere else in her kit, so it makes sense. Pens. Uh, this makes things a little more fun. Uh, I believe you can pop this. Yeah, you're... No, it doesn't change anything. You're going to be able to pop this turn too, but you shouldn't. First MP, five hit, single target, damage to one enemy. Uh, damage taken, 1,000 for 500, five turns. This is a, the worst possible normal effect you can have on, on an MP. It's not even a normal effect unless you're literally just trying to debuff someone, in which case there are so many more debuffs I can list off the top of my fucking head that would help you more than this. There's like... This is like the uh, this is the opposite of damage taken. No, no, not damage taken. Damage plus. This is what um, Helena has on her second skill that everyone complains about. Also, ten stars, and then this is the real normal effect. Like, I if they swapped, I would I would feel just better. But I'm glad this ramps up. Um. 20% MP gen, and it scales up all the way to 40. So, yes, Dobrynya starts off better, but when Dobrynya loses skills and you're not using Tomo, uh, Melison will overtake. And then when she's done being single target, she'll swap the Buster, get Invo Pierce, put a burn on. So if you're using Honey Lake, awesome. You're, you don't need to MP to get the... Invo, and then you'll have power mod instead of MP damage. And then she ramps up Buster. If you can look me like dead in the eyes and say Melison doesn't deserve her own tier, or that there are characters in the game better than Melison that are also Lancers, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to take anything you say in the game seriously. If you say Melisin needs a buff, I, don't, I can't take you seriously. 
if you say Castoria needs a buff and seriously mean it, I cannot take you seriously. Um, yes, MP1 damage might be a little lacking, but that, again, that's what Black Rail is for. And if you don't feel like using Black Rail, you can still use her for multi-core for 6 CE um, bond farming, and she's still going to do really, really well. Um, all right. This uh, turned out to be a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Um, taking out the gotcha servants, help, uh, no, taking out the welfares definitely helps make this list easier for me and like comparison wise. Um, yeah, out of all the characters I am like the most surprised about on this list, it's Parvati and the, the Valks. No, no, sorry. Uh, Lalter and the Valks. Because I, I was fully prepared to put Valks in C, but their refund is actually good. It's just they're missing that little oomph. Um, yeah, like between these two, it's like Valks could use a skill buff and they're fine. Arvati would want an MP buff to be fine. Because if she loses her demerit, it literally is not going to change anything for her farming. Her getting her third skill buff, not going to change anything. Uh, if they make her second skill three turns, it's going to help a lot, but not. I, I don't think they're going to make that skill three turns. I don't think they're going to give Parvati a three turn 50% attack buff. Her MP getting buff makes. Uh, wait, it's not buffed, right? Let me just make sure I did not. Hmm. Yeah, this is a non yeah non buffed MP. Uh, Parvati gets this buffed, and her overcharge gets buffed. Uh, she's eating very pretty. Uh, but this is the list. These characters aren't getting put up because uh, la this is like literally ripped from last year. Uh, where I put welfares at MP5 and compared them to the gotcha characters. That was very stupid. And that's why they get their own list. Okay. Um... Right. Oh, fuck me. Okay, ju just in case something happens to this, because this doesn't want to work this uh the way I want. Oh, there we go. Shit. Yeah, no, Dobrynia is not showing up. All right. Um. Oh, wow. This list looks very different. Wait, is this what people, what other people did? Oh. Oh, okay, no, here's the original. Wow, this looks different. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's it for this recording. Uh, I will see you guys. Peace.
All right, so what a solid for FGO to do for me because right today is the day I plan on releasing the Lancer tier list. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.